Every Saturday night on CFA Prime Time, we come up with a new record, and that's what they're predicting still again this evening. This will be the largest crowd ever to see a game in the state of Florida. Last year, we were in Knoxville, Tennessee. The first half was about as close as you can get to team, but it was Tennessee who blew it open in the second half. They won by a decisive margin, 45 to 3. Let's go down to the field and get the temperature from the Florida bench. Here's Adrian Karsten. Well, Ron, it is going crazy down here. Let me tell you something. Brad Culpepper, the outstanding defensive lineman for the Gators, is also the student body vice president. He went on a campaign this week, campaigned to fire up Florida Field because he doesn't want anyone to forget what happened last year. It's been a year since we played up there and got embarrassed on ESPN. Uh, we were undefeated, and uh, I've been haunted by uh, that tune Rocky Top for a long time, and I'm about ready for that dream to end. <laughs> 5,000 people and a few cheerleaders can crank up the volume on Brad's emotion. This crowd could control the game. Let's go over to the Tennessee sideline with Craig James. Hey, Tennessee's used to playing in front of 96 or 97,000 fans, but that's in Knoxville in front of their own fans. Tonight, they'll have 80,000 cheering against them, but as star defensive end Chuck Smith says, it's really no big deal. We're not going to be intimidated by anyone. We've got guys that have played for years here and have played against everyone, you know, Colorado's, Alabama's. We're not going to be intimidated by what they say or what their fans do. We're coming down there to play. Tennessee says they're expecting a wild crowd. Now it's time to see how they'll respond. Ron. Okay, Craig, we're all excited. Talk is over. Let's play football. Joey Chapman of Tennessee has it teed up, and you look at Kennedy and Houston, the two deep backs for the Gators. This will be Kennedy from the five. Now let's meet the starters on offense brought to you by Energizer. For the Florida Gators, the player of the year of the SEC already has 14 touchdown passes, Shane Matthews. An excellent core of receivers, but we have a feeling maybe Trey Everett tonight could get a big one or two. Keep an eye on number 24. And the guys that are going to have to have a great game. Number 60, Mark White. And on the other end, 56, Tony Rowell, because they will be blocking against Mims and Smith, those excellent defensive ends for Tennessee. Matthews on first down. Throws it complete. That's Rhett out of the backfield and let's meet the starters for the Tennessee defense Chris Mims number 93 and if we call his name a lot along with number 56 Chuck Smith it means it's a very long night for the Gators Ernest Field a part of a core of excellent linebackers he leads the team in tackles and in the secondary also very experienced and good great cover guy Jeremy Lincoln Complete. That is a shuttle pass, and right off the bat, Florida comes with a trick play, Mike, and we saw them work on that numerous times on Thursday. Well, it's just like a pass, Ron, so it's really, uh, it's just an incomplete pass. What they're trying to slow down early in this game is the Tennessee defense from their pursuit. Here you see the pitch out. There's the underneath handoff. It's just like a pass. It's an incomplete pass. Sean Walker, number 45, is the man who broke it up. So it is third down, and the line to make for the Gators is the 42. Matthews tipped and intercepted by Tennessee. Number five, Roderick Lewis, the sophomore from Mobile, Alabama. And a flag is down at the 32. Ron Florida with a good play call. They went to a no back set, which really stretches the 4 3 defense of Tennessee. They had the receiver open. Shane Matthews threw the ball a little high. Al Ford, the referee. After the play was over, we had a personal foul against this team. It'll be first down and 25. They're going to see Shane Matthews. No backs in the backfield, so they have everybody stretched out. Here's the pass. Little high. Roderick Lewis, number five, is going to intercept it. Big break for Florida right here because they get a 15-yard penalty. So even though the ball is intercepted, it will back them up 
15 yards. There's the interception. Big break for Tennessee early. Willie Jackson, number 22, is the man that the pass was intended for. So the Volunteers with the first big break of the night. The lone setback as they come out on offense is Kenneth Campbell. We'll check those starters after this play. Because it was a post-play foul following the interception, it is going to be first down and 25. And right now, let's take a look at the starters as Johnny Majors travels the sideline. Andy Kelly at quarterback tonight. Many say so goes Kelly, so goes Tennessee. The wide receivers, well, guess who? Mr. Pickens. If it's slim Pickens, it'll be a great night for the Gators. If it's heavy Pickens, hang on. The balls will love it. And up front, they got John Fisher back, the anchor at center. He had an ankle injury a couple of weeks ago when we did them against Auburn. Tonight, he is very close to 100% again. Here's a look at Pickens. Gator fans, the unlikely. Ron, both teams want to establish the run tonight. Carl Pickens, who you see on your screen, he's as good a receiver as I've seen in the last 10 years. He makes defensive coaches defend him. So you have to play at least a man and a half or two people on Carl Pickens. When you do that, that opens up the running game for James Stewart. It also work, works, so it opens up the passing game to the other side to Faulkner, Craig Faulkner, and J.J. McCluskey. The, the chain gang across the way, for some reason, had some problems in, in getting changed around. 15-yard penalty, as we mentioned, was marked off because of a personal foul after the pass had been intercepted. And let's take a look at the SEC standings and the obvious importance of this one. Florida, 3-0 in the conference. Tennessee, 2-0. And for the first time tonight, we see the balls on offense. Kelly going to go long and has it complete to McCluskey at the 30-yard line. Good for 28 yards. And let's meet the starters on defense for the Florida Gators. It's a very good front four, however, an injury to Mike Brandon, so they have a true freshman, Kevin Carter, who starts uh, that defensive end on the right. Linebackers are excellent, and wants to make amends for last year is Pete Bartley. Keep an eye on 44. To the secondary, Will White, an All-American. He had an ankle injury three weeks ago, almost 100% again. He's very good. Fumble, Kelly gets back on it at the 35-yard line as James Street is the man, or Stewart, I should say, is the man he wanted to give the football to. Tennessee spreads you out. Here you see the six people in the box for Florida on defense. When that's the case, Andy Kelly's going to check off to the run. Here's the draw. He just missed the handoff to number 33, James Stewart. See those middle linebackers Creeping up, ball is fumbled from center again. James Stewart makes the recovery, and now let's check a marker down at the 36-yard line as Stewart also was shaken up a little bit when he made the recovery. We've seen the same thing when we were here for the Alabama game. The noise is so great that it causes problems between the center and quarterback in an exchange. And those guys are about as close as you can get. Before the ball was snapped, we had a false start by the offense. They'll automatically have to take the penalty. They'll be second down. Well, there's the important point for Tennessee as you see the fumble again. Is that even if that ball had been recovered by Florida, it would have been a no play. And it is still second down. The line to make, they need to go all the way to the 20. Good screen down right now for Tennessee or some kind of inside throw. Stewart in the draw will take it to the 37 and 57. Kevin Carter, a freshman from Tallahassee, is there to ride him down. Now it will be third down for the Tennessee Volunteers. Ron, Florida is an eight-man front football team. They play eight people real close to the line of scrimmage. The most important people, I think, in this game tonight are the two outside linebackers, Myrick Anderson, number 26, Fee Bart Bartley, number 44. How they move around and try to confuse Andy Kelly. to this ovation for the defense. Also, big number 71, Tony McCoy gets up and leads some cheers. 
as Tennessee gets an interception, a personal foul penalty, and then a very stubborn Florida defense, and they will get nothing from the turnover. One thing they will gain is field position if this guy punts it down inside the 10. Hutton, the left footed. This is very high. It's not going to make the end zone. Tennessee is surrounding it, and it goes out of bounds at the five-yard line. So Florida has the ball back, but they will scrimmage very deep in their own territory. Let's take a break. 12.03 left in this opening quarter. Presentation of CFA football. Tennessee versus Florida is brought to you by Toyota and their quality line of 1992 cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Welcome back to Gainesville. The Gators dodge one right there, but they are going to have to scrimmage for their own five-yard line as Rhett and McNabb come out as the running backs. No tight end. Alonzo Sullivan is flexed out at tight end on the left side. Matthews with the draw, and Rhett will take it maybe for one, and that's about it. You can see Smith coming from that outside linebacking position. Also, Hardy was in the area. Chuck Smith, a senior, he is from Athens, Georgia. And I think a lot of NFL scouts, Mike, are getting very excited about him every time they see him play. Chuck Smith and Chris Mims are outstanding defensive ends. Mark White, number 60, and Tony Rowell, number 56. Both offensive tackles have a job ahead of them tonight. Marker comes down, and you can see number 60, Mark White, just what Mike was talking about, come out of his stance a little bit early. And when you're playing against somebody who is very good and gets the big jump, you try for every advantage that you can. Sometimes it causes you to make a mistake, which they just did. Well, they, movement by the offensive line, still second down. The edge that you like to get as an offensive lineman when it's a passing situation is just to move back off the ball a little bit to help you with Chuck Smith. But if if Florida's to have success throwing the football and Mark White can block Chuck Smith one-on-one, -on -one, then they won't have to use a back or a tight end to help him in the, in the pass blocking, and they'll be able to re release those people as receivers. Matthews caught for a safety. Chuck Smith. Chuck Smith, the defensive end, just goes inside and beats the block for the offensive tackle to get the safety. Now, when you look at this, here's another look. Watch number 60. Mark White being beaten by Chuck Smith. Now, what happens here is because of the interception, because of the good punt, they pin Florida back inside their five-yard line. They were able to get the safety. So again, field position football with Johnny Major so well known for. For people sitting at home saying, why did the tackle only give him a brush? They were setting up a screen to that side of the field, I think. I don't think they were looking for that much pressure from the middle, were they? Well, I, I think what happened was that Chuck Smith surprised him with the inside rush. He came so hard inside. It looked like when we talked about trying to gain an edge to the outside, he may have planted his foot and put a little bit too much weight outside. Chuck Smith was able to come under, underneath. Well, the next headache that Florida is confronted with is Dale Carter, number 18, because they will punt following the safety. And, of course, Carter is the man who haunted them last year with a second-half kickoff that broke the game wide open. That's not good news when you see Chuck Smith being able to rush one-on-one -on -one situation like that. They're going to have to double-team him and maybe Chris Mims. Their catch is called for and made at the 33-yard line. Well, it's time now for a weekly presentation of the Toyota Leadership Award. And tonight's winners are for the University of Tennessee, Sean Walker, a senior from College Park, Georgia. He's a volunteer at the Tennessee School for the Deaf and a literacy program at a local elementary school. And for the University of Florida, Brad Culpepper, a graduate student from Tallahassee. He is a student body vice president, a volunteer for the Special Olympics, a member of the Goodwill Gators, an academic All-SEC. Toyota, pleased to donate $1,000 to each player's school's general scholarship fund. James Stewart, right up the middle, and the results have been the same. You know, both number 33s tonight might have 
great credentials, but both have seen the same results tonight early going in this ball game. And that is, there's just no place to run. The key, Ron, first downs. If you can stop Tennessee and Tennessee can stop Florida and force them into passing situations, that's what you want to do in this game. Hit at the line of scrimmage and knocked down for a loss by Harvey Thomas, the junior from Pompano, Florida. And the great defensive plays on both sides of the football continue. Wow. Ron, we talk about the defense of Florida. Look at the eight-man front. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight against the run. And that's why it's so difficult to run against the eight-man front. They just outnumber you. And now you have to be worried about Carl Pickens on third down. Third down, three wide receivers come to the open side of the field. The line to make is the 44. Kelly, under heavy pressure, gets away from it. Caught from behind and fumbles the football. Florida has recovered at the 48. Anytime you put a team in a third and long situation and you're in an eight-man front, we just showed you the eight-man front against the run. Now when it's third and long yardage, those two outside linebackers become like nickel backs. There's no one open for Andy Kelly, and that's the thing Tennessee cannot afford to get into tonight. Harvey Thomas is going to strip him right here of the football and cause the big fumble. Dell Spear, number four, made the recovery for the Florida Gators. As Matthews having a run for his life, and he will maybe pick up a couple of yards, but Shazan Bradley, who continues to improve with every ball game at left defensive tackle, is the man who knocked him down. Now, well, Tennessee, as you can see by the numbers, have had some fumble problems. Something that Johnny Majors would certainly like to see out of the repertoire because they got such a fine veteran defense coming back and a good offense, but you can't be good until you erase that. Ron, I think they have to work Eric Rep on the linebackers a little bit and also Trey Everett, number 24. Matthews again steps up because of heavy outside pressure, and he will come out of bounds at they're going to spot him out at the 41. Ernest Fields, that time, ushered him out of bounds, and now it'll be third and three. That's not a sack, but Chris Mims did just as well. He was able to put enough pressure on Andy Kelly, on Shane Matthews. He was able to flush him out. Some of the scores going up at the board and some of the unbelievable upsets today. The Rice Owls, a 20-point underdog, playing against undefeated and top-10-ranked Baylor, and they win it at Waco. On any given Saturday, Texas College surprises uh, Oklahoma, also a member of the top ten. Tennessee going to be offside, free play for the Gators, but they'll only have a couple of yards. And with that, they should have picked up the first down because of the offside. Well, that's the way to slow Chuck Smith down, change the cadence and give him some kind of inflection to try to draw him offside. You know, as loud as it is, though, I'm not sure he can hear the cadence. He's got to be going off the ball. Defense and the neutral zone, five yards. And let's go down to Adrian Carson on the Florida sideline. Ron, here's the situation with the offensive line and the safety that happened right down in our end zone here. They're told, don't be intimidated, by, intimidated rather, by that Tennessee defensive line. When you go to pass rush, step up and take them on. Don't backpedal right away. You're not giving Shane Matthews enough time to throw. Well, he's been flushed up into the pocket, Adrian, almost every time he's thrown the football. Gets this one away, Trey Everett. Tries to cut back across the middle, but Fields simply will not let him go. Ernest Fields, the leading tackler on the Tennessee Volunteer team, and you can see why, stops him for what's going to be about a two-yard gain, and it looked as though it could have been big. When you go to no back set, it's almost like playing out in the backyard. You spread everybody out, and you say go down five and hook, and that's exactly what you had there. Trey Everett, number 24, able to go down five yards. Shane Matthews looks over the field. As long as there's only a four-man rush to that offensive set, I look for Florida to stay in this. Look at the way the linebackers are split up. Quarterback draws open. No setback behind Matthews. Pressure coming pell mell and he throws it complete. Willie Jackson down to the 22-yard line. Now they're going to say the 20.
Well, you see the no-back offense I was just talking about. They're spreading everybody out. Here you see Shane Matthews going back, throwing the ball to Willie Jackson, number 22. You see how the linebackers now are forced to play as a defensive back. You take them out of the running responsibilities. I look for Larry Lacewell the next time they get the no-back set to blitz him. Rhett breaks off one, breaks off two, goes inside the 15 to the 14. That is an excellent second and third effort, and only because of that was he able to pick up positive yardage. It'll be a second down and four. Miley finally stopped it. Draw, trap, screen when you got tough rushing uh, defense like Tennessee has it. Steve Spurrier knows he runs a draw. Larry Lacewell told us the other day the draw play like other people run the toss sweep. As you can tell by those numbers, inside what the coaches call the red zone, Florida has not been as efficient as Steve Spurrier would like. Trey Everett at the five and a half yard line, first and goal, Gators. Florida's doing a very good job of getting the ball to Trey Everett, who I think is a real big time receiver. Here you see good pass protection right here. Here's the in route with Trey Everett, and the tackle made, but it was a good possession down for first down. Two to nothing is our score if you just uh, joined us. It was a triple with a couple of men on, and right now the Gators with a first and goal, the ball just outside the five. Rep. Nothing there. Hardy is the first man to come across along with Chris Mims and engulf him. Take a look upstairs. The Brain Trust, Larry Lacewell, second from the top, who is uh, with his head grasped in his hands. David Cutcliffe at the bottom of the screen there. He's the quarterback coach, and right now he's sitting there praying, but he has no part of this. And back behind him is Philip Fulmer, not in our picture, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee, and he's making his plans for what is to come after this drive. Matthews holds it forever, overthrown, incomplete, and it will be third down as Dean had come in the backfield that time. A big part, Eric Rett is the man the pass was intended for. Ron, maybe one of the troubles they have in the red zone is the fact that they're not they're not able with the tight ends that they have, the big tight ends. They have some injuries there. They lost their tight end last year. And really, when you get inside the 10-yard line, you need tight ends. You need tight ends on crossing routes. And that may be giving them the problem in the red zone. Timeout called by the Florida Gators. This is the ninth play of the drive coming up, and we'll take the timeout with them. 536 left of the opening quarter. Tennessee, two to nothing. The Florida field, Ron Franklin with Mike Godfrey to Adrian Carson and Craig James. If you look on at Steve Spurrier, the Florida head coach, and here is the situation. His football team with the first and goal at the five and a half yard line. Right now, they look at a third and goal from the five. Matthews in a quarterback draw, and he will not get in. He is at the one foot line. Dale Carter is the man who took his feet right out from under him. Well, we talked about the no back set. You're going to see Florida. Look at how they have no backs in the backfield, and they spread out the linebackers. There's nobody inside to help on the draw. Shane Matthews goes back. Look, there's no linebackers. He's going to try to go up over top. Just a great tackle. Crowd will let you know. Two setbacks, McNabb and Rip. Jackson. Knocks it through. 
And the Florida Gators on the strength of Terrell Jackson's first touchdown pass reception of the year. And Shane Matthews has just tossed his 15th of the year. Gators lead by five. The Gators have gone on top. Arden Krzyzewski handles field goal and extra point attempts. Now, normally, we would see Ryan Rulett kicking off for the Florida Gators. But Krzyzewski has come out, and it tells us one thing. The Gator coaches told us on Thursday and Friday they did not want to kick off to Carter, who burned them last year. Look for a pooch kick, and if he does it in the angle from which he is set up right here, I think McCleskey, who was standing at about the 15-yard line, one of the short backs, he should be closest to it. Taken away by one of the up backs at the 30. Now the 31 yard line is Chris Mims. And now a flag comes in late. And I have a feeling that the coaches might, might talk to Mims and say, let the receiver catch the football. The play was over, a flagrant face mask against the defense, 15 yards. Okay, let, let's look back at the touchdown here. Shane Matthews is going to fake the fa fake this pass, the run to the left, and both these receivers are going to come out to the right. It's called a naked play. There's the fake run. He comes out naked. He has his choice of either receiver. Terrell Jackson with the catch for the touchdown. So the scoring drive, almost five minutes. Ten plays covering 48 yards. And you can hear... The referee, Al Ford, say flagrant face mask for 15 yards, tacked on following the pooch kick. And on first down, Daryl Mickel, who had to miss the first part of the season because of suspension, leads the way. And James Stewart just has no place to run. Well, just great defense by Florida. And again, as I said, on first down, if you can stop the running game on first down, now that puts so much pressure on the offensive coordinator on second down. You see James Stewart. See the eight-man front, down lineman moving around. James Stewart has no place to run. And as of this point, Carl Pickens has not had the ball thrown to him. Over the middle for the tight end, has it complete. Mark Adams makes the reception and really got punished on the play at the 31, but it's good for 22. And all of a sudden, the Tennessee Volunteers across midfield and a first down. Andy Kelly faked the toss sweep, threw the ball to Mark Adams on the crossing route. Carl Pickens was running a, a streak route on the right side and was open, but he did throw the ball to Mark Adams for a nice completion off the play action. Two of two. 50 yards, Andy Kelly. Again, throws to his tight end. Adams breaks the tackle and will take it inside the 25 to the 24. Let's go down to the Tennessee side and Craig James. I talked to the Tennessee offensive linemen. They say they're having a hard time hearing the snap count. It's really bothering them. It's making them a little passive when they come off the football right now. Well, I wouldn't doubt it. I jokingly said to you a while ago that I wasn't sure that the center could hear the quarterback and they're as close as you could get in the alignment. Second down. They need the 22. Stewart hit in the backfield and again it is Darren Mickel. This is Darren Mickel's first game back with the injury to the last week to the defensive end Darren Mickle now is playing number 92 you're going to see him make the tackle on James Stewart and when you again force that run against the eight man front now the pressure now I think goes to the Florida defense number 26 Myrick Anderson on underneath coverage on Carl Pickens. Mickle was suspended for five games it was a house suspension because of missing classes. Pass tipped at the line of scrimmage and blocked by Harvey Thomas. Florida took a gamble there. They came on an all-out blitz and brought the two outside linebackers, put Carl Pickens in a one-on-one -on -one with the freshman defensive back, Larry Kennedy, number three, but they were able to knock the ball down. Watch number 26, Myrick Anderson, when we come back to it on the replay. John Bexforth, who we saw 
a couple of weeks ago in a surprise move against Auburn. This is 45 yards. He's a freshman from Chattanooga. Long enough. No good. sure to be with us next Saturday. College game day gets your day kicked off with uh, previews and features of all the day's action. Chris Fowler and Lee Parcel will kick that one off at 11.30 Eastern time. Then at 12 o'clock, a Big Ten struggle between Michigan and the Indiana Hoosiers. And then 7 o'clock next or 7.30 next Saturday night, that's where Mike and I will be. Notre Dame against the Air Force Academy. Matthew puts it up top going for Trey Everett and the ball almost intercepted. In fact, Everett says he was interfered with, but Carter was coming across to help out and very nearly made the interception. Here you're going to see what Florida's doing without any backs in the back of it. See, look at the linebackers, how wide they are and how much you're, they're stretched. So look for the inside passing game to the running backs to eventually start opening for Florida. Florida feels like they can't run against Tennessee, so they're trying to go to the no back to set up their offensive game plan. They set a screen to the left. Willie McClendon breaks the tackle, and because of the second effort and third, he will have the first down at the 41-yard line. That's good for 13 yards. Tom Fuller, a senior from Crystal Lake, Illinois, number 91, made the tackle for Tennessee. That's how you take care of the rush of Chuck Smith and Chris Mims, because what you do with your offensive tackle is just set up and show pass and chop them, and then throw the screen to number five, Willie McClendon. Roderick Lewis checks out at strong safety. Mark Fletcher, number 36, comes in for the Volunteers. Willie McClendon at a draw to the left. Has five, has ten, had it off at 13. Dale Carter makes the stop. An excellent blocking by White, Ismail, and Cal Dixon on that Florida front. Steve Spur came with a screen. Now he comes with a draw play. Here's the draw to Willie McClendon, number five. Dale Carter, number 18, is going to come from his free safety spot and make the play. Again, trying to keep that Tennessee defense off balance. Draw, screen, throw the football deep, throw short, traps, just trying to keep them off balance. This time it's Rhett and McClendon as the two setbacks. Pass intended for Rhett, and I'll tell you, almost tipped and intercepted by Carter. Number 18 was the closest to it, and you can see him saying, I was that close to making the interception. Well, he was close, Ron. When you get a two-deep coverage, everybody, every coach in America wants to try to get somebody down the middle in, in what we call the middle read. He had Eric Rett down the middle on play action. See, when he faked that ball, it brought the linebackers up. You have the safeties way deep, so there is an area 18 to 25 yards right in the middle if he just could have got it down a little lower. Swings it out to Randolph. The lone setback breaks one tackle and then will be hauled down from behind at the 45. It's Casey Rogers, the senior from Humboldt, who is here. And now it is third down for the Gators, and the line to make is the 36 and a half. Looks like Tennessee has brought in four defensive ends and taken out their tackles to try to get more of a pass rush. And when they do that, these are all four very skilled pass rushers, coached by Rex Norris. And they're doing a lot of twists just to try to free somebody up to put them in Shane Matthews' space. Rogers, Min, Smith, and Todd Kelly, the four defensive ends that have been there. And now with the third down and the snap coming from the 45. Over the middle. Has it complete and how he held on? I don't have any idea. Willie Jackson, Dale Carter came up and almost took his head off. Good for 20. Well, we talked about two deep coverage. What Tennessee went to was a three-man rush. Five.
five underneath. There's a three-man rush. There's the five underneath zones. There's the two deep. Right there's where the void area is in the middle. Watch Willie Jackson get right in that middle area. I was talking about the middle read area. He pays for the catch, for the big catch. Flag on the play. You know, Willie Jackson, his dad played at Florida. 69 through 1973 as the quarter comes to an end. And after we get back, we'll show you a picture of Willie Jackson who came to this ballpark and cheered for his day. At the end of the first quarter, the Gators lead it 7-2. to Most of my friends don't know what they're going to do after graduation. But I've already locked in guaranteed skill training in the Army. Qualify now and you can reserve even the Army's most sought-after technical training up to 12 months in advance through the Army's delayed entry program. Sure, being a soldier won't be easy, but then nothing worth having ever is. Somehow, people have gotten the idea the new Toyota Paseo is a wildly exciting, sporty coupe. The Paseo is a practical, sensible car. Okay, so it has some muscle. And a low starting price could be a big turn-on. And sure, you're going to be instantly popular. That's no reason to do something impulsive. Think it over. The all-new Paseo. A very practical car. From Toyota. To keep your competitive edge, you can phone it there, fax it there, even beam it there. But there's nothing like being there. With U.S. Air and the American Express card, you get a winning combination. The airline that begins with you and the card dedicated to providing unparalleled customer service. U.S. Air and the American Express card. Keep your competitive edge. You can do it with true value. Their fall shopper circuiter will focus on value. Like this Green Thumb Classic Leaf Rake, only $5.29, with a lifetime warranty and a comfort grip. And this 19-inch outdoor broom, just $7.88, is the dirt catcher from Empire. Then move debris on wheels. The Rubbermaid Bruiser 32-gallon trash can is only $9.99 in the fall shopper and at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Today, we need to make every drop of oil count. So at BP, we're using advanced drilling techniques. Building oil fields that are smaller, more efficient, more productive than ever. Because that's the kind of thinking it takes to deliver about 10% of America's domestic oil. And to make the most of every drop. BP, the energy to change. Everyone thought this one would be tight, and that's what we had at the end of the first quarter. Florida, 7-2. to two. And the picture we were talking about a moment ago, Willie Jackson, who caught that pass and just got blasted over the middle just a, a couple of plays ago. His father was a wide receiver here at the University of Florida, and this picture was in a local newspaper when uh, Willie was about three years of age. Watch Daddy go, go Gators. His father played here 1969 through 73. And I'm sure there's no greater feeling than have your son come and play at your alma mater. Must be a great feeling. Matthews on first down gets it complete. That's Duncan. Monty Duncan, the sophomore from St. Augustine, and now they say incomplete. Couldn't hold on to it. Mike, you might talk about what is an interesting situation with Florida, the fact that they're using both Alonzo Sullivan and Monty Duncan, who are undersized, flexing them out at tight end. All they want to do, Ron, they want to get an extra receiver in. They don't have the big blocking tight end, so what they do, instead of lining him up in his regular spot, just move him out about five, six yards to make a linebacker come outside and reduce him away from the running game. It's just like blocking him. Mark White came out of his stance. You could hear the pounding on the desk. That was next door. The Florida coaches are there. <laughs> and you know, I think what Craig James said down on the field just a moment ago, I think this crowd is working against Florida as much as it's Four working against uh, Tennessee right now. Those coaches I, next door, they may not, they may just put pound, they may just throw it right through the window <laughs> here in a second. The penalties drive all coaches crazy. Well, particularly this situation. They're about to scrimmage with a second and 10 at the 24. Now it's a second and 15 from the 29 yard line.
Gonna go deep. He's got him there. Trey Evans. Shevsky to attempt the extra point. Everett now three receptions for 38 yards and a touchdown. He's perfect. Michael, take another look. Well, Ron, in too deep coverage, we talked about the area in the middle of the field that's open, but also there's an area in the corner that's open. In the back corner here where the safety can't get to. You're going to see the route. One back set. They got him spread out. Four-man rush. You watch the twist coming. Here's the corner route. Trey Everett just gets him involved enough inside that he's wide open. Tracy Smith uh, is not able to cover him. Big play receiver. Let's see him again. Trey Everett. He's as big time a receiver as you'll find in the SEC. He's an outstanding player. Big catch. Big touchdown. One more look at it as Shane Matthews has just thrown his 16th touchdown pass of the season. Trey Everett, the last time we were here against Alabama, he's having a little problem with a hamstring. But I think you could tell by that move right there as the defensive back thought he was going to make a post move and he took it out. His real name is Ezekiel the third, but he, he goes by Trey. Oh, a nice game plan by Steve Spurrier here early in the ball game. No back set. The one back set. He's able to neutralize the pass rush with a draw on the screen. So far, things are working in their favor. Tennessee offense needs to get something on first down. That's where they're having their biggest problems because on second and third, they're throwing into real heavy coverage. Again, Arden Krzyzewski is kicking off. And this time he kicks it away for the near sideline and that will catch the corner of the end zone. Carter thought it was going to go out of bounds and they would have gotten the good field position and Krzyzewski just like he drew a line just right inside the corner nails it. Now here's the scoring drive eight plays 72 yards two minutes and 31 seconds the 29 yard touchdown pass to Trey Everett from Matthews Ron second quarter no no passes to Carl Pickens yet which is it's not a fall to Tennessee it's what Florida is able to do with Myrick Anderson number 26 plus the fact this is the worst field position that Tennessee has had all night and now the crowd is becoming a real factor. Kelly has it complete at the 40 yard line to Faulkner and nothing takes the crowd out of it any quicker than that. He'll bring it out to the 44. 24 yards in the pass play. Boy Andy Kelly made a great choice here to go to Craig Faulkner. You're going to see the fake of the draw. Both teams run the draw real well. Carl Pickens is already cleared out. Now here comes Craig Faulkner underneath. When you have a player like Carl Pickens he draws so much attention that opened up Craig Faulkner. Hayden on the running play takes it for a couple. Tony McCoy, number 71, one of those at the bottom of the pile. And now it is McCoy who was saying, hey, don't get quiet on us now. Also, Tim Hawk, number 99, was in on the tackle. Yeah, Tony McCoy saying, don't get quiet now. I don't need to hear the signals. Joe, go ahead. Tennessee has to hear him now, so let's get loud. <laughs> Aaron Hayden remains in the ball game at tailback, the freshman out of Detroit. See the blitz coming from inside. Pitch goes to Hayden, breaks one tackle, will take it for a couple, and it's Darren Mickle, the junior out of Miami, who has had an outstanding game in his early going, will tackle him just before the 50. But Florida's defensive game plan is working just like their offensive game plan is it to this point. They're forcing with the disguise of the two outside linebackers. They're trying to make Andy Kelly guess whether they run or throw. They've been able to keep Carl Pickens out of the game to this point. Patch comes in the ball game number 18. He is at the top of the screen working against Pickens. 
Kelly delivers it, complete to Faulkner. That's good for the first down at the 42-yard line. Craig is a sophomore out of Richmond, Kentucky. He's not real big at 5'11", 175. But I think the decoy of Pickens and some good routes by other Tennessee receivers, and they've got something good going. You know, Ron, it's, it's just, if you're the defensive coordinator, you say, okay, they started at the 20-yard line. They're now just crossing the 50-yard line. Make them work. The big play can really hurt you. There's the quarterback comparison to this point. Again, I'm going to have to ask... E, how many how many distractions and, and penalties have we had errant snaps already? Two against Tennessee. Oh, the ball was snapped, movement by the offensive line, still first down. That goes back to the idea of making a team work the field. Eventually, they'll make mistakes. They'll fumble the ball, or they'll throw an interception, or they'll jump off sides or get a hold. The team where Carl Pickens can hurt you is in one flash. He's got seven points on the board. Make them work the field if you're Florida. If you're Tennessee, be patient. Kelly rolls the pocket this time. Drills it complete at the 40-yard line to McCluskey. And now a late flag comes in, and now another one. Lawrence Hatch is there defensively. Good play called by Tennessee. Philip Fulmer, the offensive coordinator, went away from the drop back game, now rolled out with a sprint out pass. Flagrant face mask against the defense, 15 yards. First down. You're going to see Andy Kelly in the rollout. As I said before, once you, you have a quarterback, drop him back a little bit, then roll him out a little bit so that people can't get used to where you have him. Pete Bartley eventually makes the tackle. Cool. So if you're going to blitz him, you have to guess where he's at. Now he's not always going to be in a drop back scene. That's two flagrant face masks against the Gators. And the new line of scrimmage is the 23 of Florida. Hayden straight ahead has a couple now three 57 Kevin Carter is there to hanging on to it Kevin Carter is a true freshman the defensive end that's starting and alternating with Darren Mickle in this defense by Ron Zook the defensive coordinator good drive to this point now Florida has to toughen inside the 20 Tennessee again keep the patience that they're having right now and get that ball in the end zone good look at number 50 Brad Culpepper the senior from Tallahassee one of the real leaders on this ball club. Kelly will be hit by Culpepper. <laughs> Vice president of the student body, and I imagine he commands quite a bit of respect in the uh, in the meetings <laughs> when they have about those each week. <laughs> about one more sack like that, and they'll take a revolt next week. He's going to be the president. Here you're going to see Brad Culpepper just come over the block of number 59, Mike Stow, to make the play. And force him into a third and long situation. The fourth tackle for a loss by Florida. The second quarterback set. It is third down. The line to make the 13. <laughs> Kelly has it complete at the 11-yard line. That's Craig Faulkner. Robinson and Spear will finally make the tackle. That's the experience of a veteran quarterback. Here you see Carl Pickens. Look at how you talk about drawing a crowd. Now there's Steve Bartley standing right with him. It's like basketball. A, a, a zone in one and uh, where you've got somebody on the leading scorer all the time. There's Ron Zuck, the defensive coordinator. Coach for me at Murray State, Cincinnati, and Kansas. Hayden of the handoff. He'll have one, and that's it. Again, it is nickel. And I'll tell you what, Brandon was injured as a flag has gone down in the end zone. The starter at that right defensive end, but Mickle has come up extremely big in this game so far. They've done a nice job of alternating Carter and Mickle to keep them fresh. And we've just been told by Alvin Lindblad, our statistician, and Billy Warndell, our spotter, that... of a foul against Florida. That's five individual tackles for Mickle already. We have 10-39 left to play until halftime. Well, that's a big penalty right there, Ron, because pretty good defensive play. Now they have first down on the 
up the four-yard line. That's Jerry Odom jumping up and down. He was a starter at middle linebacker, or one of the middle backers last year out of Merritt Island, now a graduate assistant. Keller rolls the pocket, has a man, touchdown Tennessee. Corey Fleming got in the back of the end zone, and the sophomore from Nashville is there to gather it in. Boys, good play call again by the offensive coordinator, Phil Fulmer. He brought Carl Pickens in motion to try to get him in the flat and curl Corey Fleming deep in the end zone. Andy Kelly, the wise choice, threw the ball for the touchdown to Corey Fleming, who was wide open. Next for it to attempt the extra point for the ball. So, 10 minutes, 20 seconds left until halftime. And another look is Kelly, who has shown so much poise on this drive, finds Fleming in the back of the end zone. And the reaction from Andy Kelly, yes, sir. It is six points. Take a break. Gators, 14 to 9. When it's time to turn on the heat, but that old furnace lets you down. Install the system you can rely on, Temstar. Replace that beast in the basement with reliable Temstar and get help. Five years of extra protection on parts and labor, now at participating Temstar dealers. Get the furnace that's quiet, efficient, and extremely reliable. Temstar. Rely on the star. Mercedes. BMW. Lexus. Expensive cars with one luxury that helped those who could afford them walk away with their lives. An airbag. Fortunately for the rest of us, there's the Isuzu Stylus. The first and only import under $10,000 with a driver's side airbag, standard. So you too can enjoy a lower cost of living. The Isuzu Stylus at just $91.99. There's no comparison. of CFA football, Tennessee versus Florida, is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. And by Levi's Jeans for Men. Welcome back to Florida Field. Ron Franklin with Mike Godfrey to Adrian Karsten and Craig James. And so many times, big games don't live up to expectations. So far, for the first 25 minutes or 20 minutes of this one, it has been just what we thought it would be. Kelly on that drive, Mike. 4-4, four, four, 36 yards, and the touchdown. Patience. That was the key. Harrison Houston fumbles the ball, now picks it up. And will bring it out near the 20-yard line. So many times, everybody relaxes a bit, and that can turn into a trouble situation after a fumble. The Tennessee with good coverage downfield. Gets all the NFL action on Sundays on the ESPN. Join Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Joe Theismann for the most comprehensive preview show on television. It's NFL game day at noon tomorrow. Then see the best recap of television on NFL primetime at 7 only on ESPN. This time, Florida with split backs. And for the second time tonight, we see Rhett and McClendon. Rare situation. McClendon puts the hit down, barrels out to the 23-yard line. I believe Ernest Fields is the man who got there to make the hit, along with Todd Keller. Well, there was a little shovel draw by Shane Matthews. He back, didn't even eye him up. Willie McClendon, they had two running, two tailbacks in the ball game, flipped him the ball, number five, and just really nonchalant. Yeah, but they, they're going to have to go a distance till they catch up with Tony Saka. He did it behind the back with both hands at different times in the game today. Pete Maravich of college football. Draw play with Red. Flag comes down, and he will bring it to the 26. 45, Shazan Bradley, or check it, Sean Walker, I should say, is there to make the tackle. That flag came down immediately, just as the ball was snapped. 
Con Walker has the draw play. He's the middle linebacker, number 45. He has the draw, and he's going to have those backs in pass coverage. Uh, illegal formation. You had only six men on the line of scrimmage, five yard penalty, repeat the second down. I'll tell you why that happened. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. When a tackle wants to try to get an advantage, he'll back up, and that's what the side judge called the offensive tackle on the left side. Mark White, number 60, was deeper than he felt like he should be to try to get the edge on Chuck Smith. I'd want to get as far away from Chuck Smith as I could, too. <laughs> no back set. They set the screen, and this time, I think Matthews just threw it away. It was Todd Kelly who was coming through, number 58. And I think Shane Matthews realized that uh, this was not going to be a great reward, even if he completed the pass, and he was about to be knocked down in his own end zone. For the pass rush of Tennessee, when they when they time everything right and the two defensive ends, and now they're substituting, bringing the backup defensive ends, Todd Kelly and Casey Rogers, a little bit. It's very difficult to try to block them. They, they're just very strong pass rushers. Third down, Florida needs the 30. Pressure again, pass overthrown. He simply didn't have time to get a read. Again, there's a marker down at the line of scrimmage as Matthews got belted, and it was Casey and Roger, or Casey Rogers and Todd Kelly again. Illegal formation on the six men on the line. Decline, short down. Well, that drives you crazy if you're a coach. I don't. I didn't see on that time if it was a tackle or a wide receiver. When you have a no back set, you have people in unfamiliar territory, and, and so somebody didn't either move up on the line of scrimmage. Everybody stayed in the backfield. And they didn't have enough people on the line of scrimmage. Here's where Dale Carter becomes tough. Shane Edge to punt. It's the first time that Florida would have had to punt tonight. Good high driving spiral. Good heavens. Carter all the way back to the 27. And he will be stopped at the 30. That's about as good as it gets in special teams. 54 yards of the putt, two on the return. If you're trying to decide between an Isuzu Trooper with the most cargo space in its class, and an Isuzu Rodeo with the most overall passenger space. Take your time. After all, at these prices, you can afford to be choosy. Isuzu, there's no comparison. When it's time to turn on the heat, but that old furnace lets you down. <laughs> Install the system you can rely on, Temstar. Replace that beast in the basement with reliable Temstar and get help. Five years of extra protection on parts and labor, now at participating Temstar dealers. Get the furnace that's quiet, efficient, and extremely reliable. Temstar, rely on the star. This is Control, go ahead. We've got trouble. What's the point of origin? Japan. Stand by, I'm patching you through to command center. We've got to find it. We'll have it tomorrow. Tomorrow's too late. You inform headquarters. We're working on it. Hold on. We've got something. Quick, check the vehicle ID number. That's it. With more parts for more import cars than anybody else. We've got it. Napa is a domestic solution to an international problem. Notre Dame's Fighting Irish are out to stop the dominant ground attack of Air Force. Next Saturday, live on ESPN. Well, Mike, it's where we'll be next Saturday night in the beautiful uh, Rocky Mountains Air Force Academy, playing host at Notre Dame. Fisher DeBerry and Lou Holtz. A nice challenge. Kelly on the short drop gets it out to Faulkner makes a good move and Will White will push him out of bounds 
and around the 40-yard line. They're going to say he's a yard shy of the first down. Andy Kelly here, look at the, again, look at the front here. All these people inside. Now, there's Carl Pickens upside. That's on the upper left, and that's what he has, and Andy Kelly checks off on this play. You see the pass he throws to the other side, but, but the one time so far I've seen where they've given Carl Pickens one-on-one -on -one coverage. Counter the option. Going to go long, and he's got him open. Looking for Pickens, and the ball got lofted, and it is knocked away by Larry Kennedy. I'll tell you for the world, if Kelly had gotten any kind of spiral on that so the ball would have carried, Pickens had broken five yards free. And let's go down to Craig James for an update. Craig. It's amazing they were able to audibleize on the last play. Several of their players said that it's so loud, they're just going on the snap count on the ball, the movement of the football, that they cannot hear anything when Andy tries to make an audible, audibleization. Well, Carl Pickens is heading to the sideline along with Faulkner. Corey Fleming will come into the ball game. And for the balls, it is third down, and they need about a half yard. Straight ahead is Kelly. He'll have it. Brad Culpepper down at the bottom of the pile. Also, you can see Godfrey Miles getting up. There's uh, 71, Tony McCoy. And here comes number 15 back on. Mike, how much fun is it? Uh, they just went deep. To, uh, to Pickens, but I guess he's going to have to grow accustomed to being decoyed <laughs> because exactly. before this year is over, he's going to get the same treatment by everybody they face. Well, I said it before. If I walked into the stadium as a head coach, I, I wouldn't want Carl Pickens to beat me, so I'm going to make sure two people are on him all the time in some type of coverage. He's down at the bottom of the screen. As Kelly throws it, great catch by Faulkner, and he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39. That ball was behind him, and Craig just grabbed it in. And what happens when you talk about Carl Pickens, I said it from the start, defensive coordinators have to make adjustments. And when you're going to double team a great receiver like Carl Pickens, you're going to leave a wide receiver open. And here you see number four, Craig Faulkner, with just an excellent catch, good concentration. But he has one-on-one -on -one in his zone coverage over there that he should be open all the time. He and J.J. McCleskey. Well, Faulkner, five receptions now for 75 yards. Now here's where they have a chance to get the ball to Carl Pickens, a one-on-one -on -one situation right here. You see the linebackers coming on a blitz pass thrown, and it is trapped by Pickens. The problem is they rushed eight people and they don't give you a lot of time to throw it to him. You know, that, that was perfect harmony as far as coordination between the defensive coordinator and the crowd. They really got loud just as Kelly was trying to make an audible. I'll bet when Ron Zook calls that defense, his heart's in his throat because he knows if you don't get to Andy Kelly and he gets that ball to Carl Pickens, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It could be a track meet. I was worried about Ron in our defensive meeting yesterday. He was so fired up. He's going to hyperventilate. They do the same play to Pickens, breaks by a tackle, and he is finally stopped at the 22-yard line at Carlton Miles, same six. That's why his heart's in his throat. He went again to the blitz. He went to eight man front to stop the run, which gave Carl Pickens a one-on-one -on -one situation. Here you're going to see Andy Kelly. He's looking right to Carl Pickens. There's the blitz. There comes Myrick Anderson, number 26. There's Carl Pickens, and now Tim, it's almost a big play, but a good yardage. There you see Carl Pickens, one-on-one. -on -one. Number three, Larry Kennedy. There's the quick hitch. Larry Kennedy comes up. There's where he's so tough. And he's just a little moody inside, but he's strong with his size. Physical player. Came there as a defensive back. So let's take a break. Gators lead it 14 to 9. We'll be right back. In golf and tennis, every stroke counts. At International Discount Golf and Tennis, PGA and tennis professionals are on staff to help you pick and fit the right equipment. Save on professional golf and tennis gear. Save on the biggest names in golf and tennis. Save on a wide selection of everything to improve your game. At International Discount Golf and Tennis, you save with every stroke. With three Central Florida locations, International Discount Golf and Tennis. The elegance, sophistication, and timeless beauty of sparkling diamonds and gemstones is what Brittany Jewels is famous for. From Cartier come fine perfumes, accessories, and classic timepieces as only Cartier can create. The Corum Gold Ingot Watch and superb timepieces from Piaget 
to find elegance and style in the passage of time. Brittany Jewels, located in the lobby of the Walt Disney World Dolphin, is open 9.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Get pure power or pure beauty or both. You decide. See Joe Weider's Ms. Olympia Bodybuilding Championships Sunday night live on ESPN. Rick Meyer and Notre Dame's Fighting Irish are on a mission. They're out to stop the dominant ground attack of Air Force. And Indiana faces Michigan. Live college football next Saturday on ESPN. Well, Tennessee stepped on the field to beat Alabama in 1988 with an 0-5 record. And the ball fans were kind of screaming about head coach Johnny Majors, who had led the Orange to a 10-2-1 mark just the year before. Major's team went down for the sixth consecutive time that day, but then they bounced back to win the final five games of the season. And, of course, the story from there gets very, very good for Major's. Ronnie's 29 and 3 and 2 since that point. This team that you see tonight, the Tennessee team, they're they were they're battle hardened. I mean, they were in that 0 and 6 and they won. I think this team is good because of the results of what happened back in 88. They learned how to win. Kelly fumbles the snap from center, and Florida has recovered at the 24. his second recovery of the night. One mistake so kill you, and I think Andy Kelly just pulled out a little too soon on the snap. Here you see Andy Kelly rocking back. Looks like the ball hits his hand and just, he's stepping back so quickly. I think the ball just went out and went to the ground. And the surge by Culpepper had both the center and the guard occupied. They were pushed out of the play. Matthews has it complete. That's Houston. And he has it up for the Florida first down at the 36. Well, Harrison Houston tightened up his split a little bit, ran a curl route, and then broke it to the outside, what we call an arrow route. Good pass completion, good catch, good yardage. Now, Harrison Houston was a backup, but Coach Spurrier felt like he needed to get Harrison Houston and Trey Everett on the field at the same time because they felt like they had speed and they were the most productive receivers. Red and McNabb at the setbacks this time. Red, oh, does he get blasted at the line of scrimmage? He will not get back. It is Shazan Bradley, number 40, the senior out of Athens, Red Tennessee, who makes the hit. Red, as soon as he got the football, got number 40. <laughs> I had a chance to talk to Eric Red yesterday. He is an outstanding individual. He, I asked him, I said, would you rather run the football or would you rather be a pass receiver? And he said, either way, I just went to football. And uh, an outstanding young man. Mike, one of the characteristics on him, you don't see a lot of backs do this, but when they're just going through dummy, when they're running plays in practice, and he gets a handoff, he runs the entire length of the field. It could be 60 or 70 yards from where they are. Coaches told me 110% of the play. Pass wide open over the middle, down to the 40-yard line is Aubrey Hill. <laughs> 26 yards. Keep talking about the no back set and what problems it has caused Tennessee. Jane Matthews comes right back to it and is, and is able to throw this football right down the middle of the field because he's spreading everybody out. Here you see Chuck Smith on the rush trying to get just almost to Shane Matthews before he was able to get the ball away. Good, Shane, good Shane pass. was not able to enjoy the completion. He never saw it. Dexter McNair still on his feet, has the first down, and it's good for 14 yards. Reeves on the sideline trying to inspire his teammates. Here you go, see Dexter McNabb on the draw. Watch the lineman show pass. Ball given to Dexter McNabb on the draw. Watch the linebackers. Look at the cross blocking and look at the hold it opens. When you throw the football successfully, you can't open the run. 
great. McNabb is no pleasure to tackle either. He's six feet, 238 pounds. Matthew set, going to go long. This one will be overthrown as Houston was the closest man to it. And by the way, the 13-yard carry by McNabb just a moment ago, Mike, is their longest rush from center tonight. I think the team that wins this game will be the team that establishes some sort of running game. I know both defenses are very strong against the run, but someone has to establish the running game to open up their passing game, the play actions, in key situations. Steve Spurs has done an outstanding job. I had a chance to watch practice the other day. Fine teacher. No back set again. Now, the reason this is causing so much problem is they have to move their linebackers, have to spread out. They need blitzing in this situation. That's what he sees. He's bringing somebody to help block. Matthews in the short drop, puts it up for the end zone, has a man there, and caught out of bounds. Trey Everett caught it, but he was out of bounds. Jeremy Lincoln is the man they were working on. Now that's what I thought that would happen with Larry Lacewell. Now with the no back set, he's going to make a blitz that's going to bring some receivers in. There's Larry Lacewell. You see him right here in your screen, second from the left. He sees the no back set. He's not going to sit back there anymore and let him pick him. He's going to be able to come back after him and try to pressure him and make him keep some of those receivers in. So now you get a one on one situation on the outside. Third down. And the situation, as a late replacement comes in on offense, that is Dexter McNabb. It is third down, and the line to make is the 15, 16 and a half. And now, because of the confusion, Florida's going to have to use a timeout. So let's take it with them. 5.09, left until halftime. Gators leading by five. Why have the great outdoors become an indoor sport? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brewed, not watered down. To drink light, yet satisfy completely. So while we may have some things inside out, refreshment isn't one of them. You could call one company to take your package to an address across town. And you could find somebody to take your package to any address cross-country. Then you could call a third outfit that could take your package overseas. And yet another that could take your package overnight. But there's only one company you could call if you only wanted to make one call. This year's father-son picnic was on Saturday, but they said no, it was definitely on Sunday. And you know, they never listen to me. Here's to wise men, wiser women, and comfortable blue jeans. Wrangler. Welcome back to Florida Field. The situation, third down of 10 for the Florida Gators, and the line to make is just outside the 16. What Tennessee has just done, they have just brought in all four defensive ends. They will be the down four. Smith, Kelly, Rogers, and Mims. And for Steve Spurrier's quarterback, 12 of 21, one interception, two touchdowns, 136 yards for Matthews. Watch number 21 to come out of the backfield. Right over the middle, has it complete Willie Jackson. Boy, nice call by Steve Spurrier. He brought out number 21, Dexter McNabb. You're going to watch him over the middle and then watch the receiver come behind him because the linebacker jumps the throw to the back. Here's the back coming out of the backfield. Now you see the route right behind him. Underneath the safeties, good completion. First and goal. Rep and McNabb are the setbacks for the Gators. And Dexter McNabb still has his shoulder down, driving inside the five, and Ernest Fields will knock him down at the four. 
Pete Lord on this drive has been able to keep Tennessee off balance. Steve Spurrier with some very good play calling in this drive. You see the confidence that he has. We've talked about the last time we were here. He doesn't wear a headset a lot of times. John Reeves, the former quarterback, up here in the press box, uh, also looking at the secondary coverages, and they'll confer between offenses. Two tight ends come in the ball game. Terrell Jackson, who has a touchdown pass in the game, number 87, at 85, George Rushing, who is a freshman out of Miami. And they go with Rhett. Touchdown, Florida. Telling you, Ismail and Cal Dixon did some kind of job of blowing the hole open. Rhett takes it into the end zone. And Arden Krzyzewski will try to put the Gators on top 21 to 9. One more look and watch those linemen. Just a cutback. Excellent cutback by Eric Red. Good blocking by Ishmael and Dixon. Look at the cutback. And the coach who called the play feels pretty good about it. Nine plays, 75 yards, three minutes at 26 seconds. After the Tennessee mistake. It turned it into a score and you can't when you're on the road like this you can't afford turnovers Mike we have 358 left until halftime 21 to 9 the Gators on top and of course ever present in their mind and in the mind of their fans is what happened last year up at Knoxville and they've had 363 364 days to uh, to think about that a 45 to 3 shellacking and let's go down to Adrian Karsten, who is behind the Florida bench right now. Well, here's the situation, Ron. As Craig James mentioned a couple of moments ago, this decibel meter is the result of this last Florida drive. This is registering over 100 decibels. And ironically, the only other state, and I think that we can say comes close to this, is up in Knoxville. Uh, Shane Matthews said earlier this week that it's very tough to quiet his own crowd. The result is either 85,000 sore throats in the morning or 85,000 earaches, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> All right, Adrian. Helps the doctors around here, oh, Adrian. Krzyzewski kicks this one away. This will be Dale Carter from the two. Crosses the 20 and is going to be spun down at the 24-yard line. Tennessee needs another drive like their last drive where they showed patience, took what the defense gives you. I know people don't like to hear that sometimes, but that is exactly what's happened in this ball game. Tennessee so far has been patient. Take what they give you, try to get a nice drive, and get a score before half. Speaking of half, this is what is coming up during the intermission. Mr. Brando and Mr. Corso bringing up the date on what is going on in college football. Play action. Puts it on his hip. Looking for Pickens. Has him at the 40. Pushed out of bounds at the 44. Del Spear, number four, got the bump on him to knock him out of bounds. Florida's running a lot of two deep coverage just like Tennessee. And you're going to see Carl Pickens run like a post. Take him inside. Make him think you're going inside. And then break behind him. Now the safety, number four, Dale Spear, has to come over to make that play. Kelly again has Pickens can't get out of the grasp of Fee Bartley who will spin him down they're going to give him forward progress inside the 42 yard line and just like that Tennessee is in the Gator territory well, they're not trying to go for the home run now with Carl Pickens Carl Pickens just on an inside route about a 15 yard route where he's just breaking inside now what Tennessee has done a little different is brought in a tight end in the offense and now going to two, two back offense. Little change up. Kelly. Well, a little missing communication. He wanted Pickens again. I think what Tennessee has finally said, besides the change that they have made in that offensive alignment, alignment that you alluded to, 
is that they have said, hey, we've got the big weapon on the field. Let's do everything we can to get the football to it. Have Coming to. up at halftime, Timmy Brando and Lee Corso. Also the top stories of the day, some major upsets. The Longhorns over the Sooners. Rice upends Baylor and East Carolina surprises Syracuse. Kelly, nice job of ball handling, gets it off to Hayden, and he will be stopped in the field of play and not be able to get out of bounds. Florida's done a, doing a very good job of disguising their defenses there. On first down, they're trying to blitz a little bit more than they have in the previous series, and now they've put themselves in a third and three. Ron Zook trying to figure out exactly what he wants to get called here, but uh, make sure one thing is going to know where Carl Pickens is. Out of the backfield, inside the 30, and Von Reeves, the tight end, coming across is there. Really nice call by Tennessee. What Tennessee is doing right now, Ron, is something you mentioned to me they did last year. They're bringing in tight ends now a little bit to try to block the outside linebackers. They lined up Von Reese in the backfield. Now, he's he's going to block the outside linebacker if he comes. If he doesn't come, he's going to release, and that's exactly what he did there. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey to Adrian Karsten and Craig James. From Florida Field in Gainesville, great to have you along. It is 21-9, to 9, the Gators. 221 left until the halftime, and the balls are driving, and they go upstairs. This is for Pickens, and the ball is knocked away. Larry Kennedy had great field position defensively. Well, you take your shots if, you, if you're Tennessee, and they felt like they're at the field position right now where you throw it up, and Larry Kennedy, who's a true freshman who signed with Ohio State, didn't make his test score, sat out, and came to Florida. He's going to go up for a jump ball with Carl Pickens. I like the odds for Carl Pickens there. Did you see him talking with Dell Spear as he came back up the field to safety? They've gone against each other now for a couple of years. You know, when the Florida players said what they have been told to their coaches, don't jive talk this fellow because he gets tougher with tough talk that you try to get to. It. Well, he's a defensive player. He has defensive personality. Draw play. Mose Phillips. Will fight it forward to the 25. Nickel, number 92, is down at the bottom of the pile. And now for Tennessee, the situation. It is a third down, and they need seven. The line to make is the 18. What I would do right now, if I was Johnny Majors, is I would try to use Carl Pickens as a decoy and try to bring Von Reeves out of the backfield across to the side where Carl Pickens is. Try to get the football to either he, Faulkner, or McCuskey. Looking for Pickens. Can't get it. Larry Kennedy again. Now that Mike, what have we got as far as a field goal attempt? This is pretty long. And they're going to go for it. Bexport will come out and have the attempt. Now, his longest is 44. That was in a game we telecast a couple of weeks ago up in Knoxville against Auburn. And this attempt will be in that vicinity. In fact, one yard shorter. They'll put it down at the 33. So it's a 43-yard attempt. And I'm telling you, even freshmen now, it amazes me. 85,000 screaming, going absolutely nuts. This kid, freshman out of Chattanooga, just knocks it home from 43. No pressure on him. Calm and cool. He just came in here and delivered and put three more on the board for the balls to make it 21 to 12. But that's what, as a defensive coordinator, Ron Zuck, and we talked to Larry Lacewell about it, make them work the field. You, know, you give up three, but you still did your job. You kept them out of the end zone. And it's like the Larry Lacewell said, we'll give them nickels and we'll give them dimes, but we don't want the dollar given up. And they, they're not doing that. They're giving them the three points. Let's look at Bexport one more time. In fact, the game that we had a couple of weeks ago against Auburn, we were a little bit surprised because 
they had even thought of redshirting him even the, by the middle of that week and then he waltzed out on the field and and didn't miss a thing that he kicked all night freshman out of Chattanooga Red Bank High School they ripped that red shirt right off of him because he is a key player for this Tennessee team Larry Kennedy I got to commend this fellow he is a freshman as well he has done an excellent job on uh, just one of the best that's come along in a while Carl Pickens Joey Chapman will kick it off for Tennessee Houston is back in a dual safety along with number three Kennedy short kick going to be taken by Kennedy at the 10 runs into trouble out of the 28 yard line but that's good field position with a minute 20 seconds to work with okay you're Steve Spurrier what do you do right here do something safe on first down either a safe throw or a draw to try to get myself in a position where I get about five to seven ten more yards and I'm going to take some shots I think Steve Spurrier being an offensive coach figures hey I got 120 on that clock I'm going to use it so I think first down is very important to what he can pick up here. He's got one timeout left. Matthews wanted to go with a quarterback draw, and that's going to go for Nutt. That's number 40, Shazan Bradley, who has him all the way. Safe Matthew call. Curry. That's exactly what he did. Felt like if he could bust a quarterback draw for a few yards and put himself in a little bit better position. Johnny Majors not going to use his timeouts. They stopped them right here with uh, still in the 40s. Don't you think Johnny might use one? I don't think so. I'd make them kick the Carter if they couldn't get it. But they're going to pick up the first down in this play. Nope, Woody Jackson going to be stopped short. Loses the football. And... Florida it appears no signals yet well they're pulling underneath that pile Florida football <laughs> Willie just aged from that picture we saw him a little little earlier when he fumbled that ball clock now runs 18 seconds 17 seconds Matthews will step out of bounds just across midfield with the 11 ticks left on the clock. 19 yards on the scramble. What do you put one up now? I think you do, but I, I think Steve Spur, being the offensive coach that he is, is thinking in terms of three right now. He's trying to figure out how to get himself down there for one field goal shot. He has the timeout. If you're a defensive back from Tennessee, but you have to figure also it's going to be some type of out route where they're going to try to get somebody out around about the 30 yard line. Tennessee's going a three man rush and heavy. You may try to throw to the back out of the backfield, they catch the short pass and try to run for the yards. Florida, I believe, had too many men on the field, although they have not been flagged as McNabb came off. And Florida tries to call the timeout and they do with three ticks left on the clock. I couldn't tell McNabb came off just as the ball was being snapped. No flag was thrown. So I guess they ran the play with 10 people there. Now Ron he has only one choice. He's got to throw one. He's got to pump it up to the end zone. Now if you're Tennessee defensive back they're, they're going to be in a three man rush and drop an eight. Arden Krzyzewski walks the sideline and probably telling his teammates right now Knowing Arden, that, that, hey guys, you know, I probably could hit the 62 yarder, but coach doesn't want to do it right now. Coming up at halftime, Tim Brando, Lee Corso, and the top story is three major upsets today in college football. By the way, the longest field goal in the history of this football team, the University of Florida, is 60 yards. Chris Perkins, that was against Tulane in 1984. This attempt, if it if they were to go for it, would be about 61 61 and a half and Florida will not do that. Well you talk about some coaching staffs feeling good tonight. East Carolina. Rice. They're sitting in pizza drinking a Coke right now watching this game. Feel pretty good about themselves. I think Fred Goldsmith is uh, is smiling. Huh? I imagine David McWilliams is smiling as well. She rolls the pocket. He's going to go all the way. Into the end zone. The ball is tipped in the air. Tipped again. It is. Touchdown! 
No. Now they say intercepted. I beg your pardon. Daryl Hardy. He had it, Ron. You're right on it. He did have the ball in the last deflection. Daryl Hardy took it away. Boy, you're, you're, if you saw exactly what everybody else. See, what you want to do on that play is just throw it up for grabs. Shane Matthews is going to roll out to give him a little bit more time. Now he just puts all the oops he can underneath that ball. Now it's a basketball play again. Jump ball. You want somebody to tip it. One of your receivers to tip it. Tip it over here. There's your receiver to catch it. He's got it. Daryl Hardy takes it away. He had it, and Hardy took it away from it. It saved Tennessee a Florida touchdown. Let's go to break and catch our breath. and defense. Johnny Majors has a good plan. The three fumbles have really hurt them. What Florida's done a good job is guessing right in the defensive plan. Here you see the eight people on defense in the eight-man front. Here's I count them for you. Seven, six, seven, eight. Now watch the eighth person come in. They have eight people to stop the run. They've been guessing right against the Tennessee offense. They've been able to stop the run. Only giving up 14 yards rushing in the first half. I think Johnny Majors has a good plan. He just has to continue patience eventually guess right against that defensive front and have success. Well, speaking of Johnny Majors, uh, let's go down to the field. Craig James is with him right now as his team comes out of the tunnel. Here's what he had to say about that first 30 minutes. Thank you, Ron. Coach, did the crowd noise restrict anything that you could do offensively? Well, the crowd noises are much more of a factor in college football than ever before because of larger stadiums and playing here, playing at the Dome, or playing in Knoxville. It was a big factor in, uh, in some mishaps at the center quarterback exchange. That's the biggest factor. And it does control your audible, son. Is there any way you can get Carl Pickens more involved in the second half? We've tried to get him quite a bit involved. We've thrown to him quite a few times. And right now, the biggest thing we should do is not stop ourselves. That's been the biggest margin of change in the half. All right, Coach, good luck. All right, back up to you, Ron. Okay, Craig, thanks so much. We are set to kick this one off in the second half. And Coach Majors did exactly what we were alluding to. That is Tennessee with three fumbles. And all three have been recovered by the University of Florida. That is off McCleskey's headgear. Can't find it. And now the return by Mose Phillips, shy of the 20-yard line. Mike here, the first half numbers. I think statistics are, are, are pretty even in the ball game. The rushing attempts where you see Tennessee, 16 rushing attempts, only 14 yards. That's the only area I think that Johnny Majors would like to have a little bit better. He's got to be able to run the ball to win. And the other thing is the turnovers, the three fumbles that they've been, that they've given up. Kelly going to throw in first down. Tried to get it to Hayden as he had brought him out of the backfield. Incomplete. And let's talk about the numbers for the quarterbacks in the first half. We see that Kelly has 15 completions and 21 attempts. Matthews 14 for 24. Both quarterbacks enjoyed a pretty good evening. And, and again, I think what Tennessee's plan has been excellent. I, I don't think they've done anything wrong except not being able to run the football a little bit more effectively and just keep it and don't turn it over. Hayden, Paul Pepper on top, down on bottom is Darren Mickle. It will be third down Tennessee and they'll be looking at about nine yards. In fact, I remember last year at halftime looking at the total numbers and they were about as close as they are this year. Florida 228 total yards in that opening Hayden, half and Tennessee 226. 40 snaps for Florida, 37 for Tennessee, and your point is well taken. They are going to have to be able to speak to Tennessee. They're going to make a ball game of this. They're going to have to establish the running game. Third down, the line to make, the 29. Wide open is Pickens. He'll take it across the 40 to the 43, and Lawrence Hatch is there to make the stop for Florida. I take credit that completion to that offensive line. Rodney Gordon, Tom Myslinski, John Fisher, Mike Stahl, Patrick Lenore. They just gave him so much time. Andy Kelly can just take his time back there and let this route with Carl Pickens. Again, when you're facing too deep, the corner route is open. Carl Pickens makes the catch. Lawrence Hatch, number 18 on the tackle. It's a big drive for Tennessee. Um, start the third quarter. You always like something good to happen with a great drive. Hayden tries to turn the corner. 
cannot do it. That excellent pursuit by the Florida defense, Larry Kennedy. We called his name a lot tonight. As Tennessee has kind of looked at him. They have put uh, number 15, Mr. Pickens, out there on him. And I think Larry has really stood up and said, that, hey, I'll, I will account for myself. He's responded. He's played well back there. And then you look at the front of Florida. What Ron Zook wants that tailback to do is Stuart Hayden is to run east and west, not north and south. And they've been able to stop them. Kelly. He did a smart thing there. He just got rid of it. Thomas, you could see, leveled him. And also 92 Mickle, and it'll be third down. Well, I'll tell you what, you can give credit to disguising in the secondary. Andy Kelly thought he had the quick pass here to Carl Pickens, but the corner will roll up. Now watch. Here he sees he got him one-on-one. -on -one. Now look at the corner roll up. He took away the short route. There's nothing else there. That's why he had to throw the ball away. Give that one to the secondary for a good disguise and coverage. Kelly on third down, passing four of six for 52 yards. He needs the 47 of Florida. And he's going to go up on top, looking for Pickett. And knocked away by Kennedy. And again, the, the freshman comes up there. Wow. Now, you give a coverage where you roll the corner up. Now you get a coverage where you got the corner dropping back. Larry Kennedy now stride for stride with Carl Pickens. You can't play this any better than Larry Kennedy to two freshmen. He's running, little bump there, gets his hand in his face, and he's able to knock the ball away. It's awfully good defense, regardless of what class you're in. will have it inside the 15. Big, big play by the Florida special teams. Gilmore recovers. Carlton Miles, I believe, number 31, is the man who got it. The Tennessee special teams are notorious for being great special teams. You have to make a mistake, and the up back went outside and didn't block number 31, Carlton Miles, and allowed him the shortest point to block the punt. Let's see if Florida can take advantage of this situation from the 14. Matthew drops it over the top, complete at the five-yard line. we talked about earlier the great pass rush the, the Florida offensive line in the last few series have done a good job of protection in Matthews that was a five-step drop that he got the ball away quickly before the defensive ends could get to him good blocking by the offensive line of Florida Jackson and rushing come in as dual tight ends Rhett, right up the middle he'll have the first down it was a second down and short. Let's go to Adrian Karsten for an update. Adrian. Well, gentlemen, you said it. Start of the second half. Momentum could make the difference in this game. Coming down into this end zone now, the whole situation is that after they block that punch, all they've got to do now is punches across the goal line. The whole idea of momentum now, as far as our offensive line is concerned, is they've got to move the defensive line of Tennessee. First and goal for the Gators. The ball at the three-and-a-half-yard line. Eric Rett, he'll walk it in. direction Tennessee heading to the left he cuts it back against the grain and goes for the touchdown Kuchewski pops it through 
One more look at the touchdown. We talk about the block punt, setting it up. There's the counter play, a little give to the fullback. He's able to come back against the green, as you said, and score the touchdown. They were able to block that whole front down. Steve Spurrier looks up at the scoreboard. His Florida Gators lead 28 to 12. Some of the record crowd here, and they're kind of whooping it up. Still a lot of football left to be played, but the Gators have already scored 28. They have now put a distance between themselves and the Volunteers of 16 points. Chepsi's kick comes down to the goal line, and this is Carter. Gets belted as he crosses the 35, and he's all the way back out to the 39-yard line. Lex Smith and the special teams is the man who got a hold of it. Well, with a 16-point uh, lead, Florida feels like they can kick the ball to Dale Carter. Now, here's the kick to Carter. You're going to see the wedge on the inside. Anytime a team kicks off in the hash, you usually return it into the hash. He makes a good cut right here and is able to give his offense good field position. The 39, 38-yard line. He's really tagged him there, and he still picked up five more yards. Boy, this crowd wants to see some blood after what happened last year in Knoxville. Flags are down, and the mission was accomplished. Jumping off sides, Tennessee. When you're hit 16 points around, you can do a lot of disguise, and you can kick the ball deep to Dale Carter, disguise on defense. And that's what Florida is able to do. The ball was snapped, movement by an offensive lineman, still first down. The other thing you want to do against the great teams when you get an undefeated team like Tennessee, you want to take one dimension away. Either take the run game away or the passing game. Ron Zook and his defense have been able to take away one dimension in this offense right to this point, the running game. Three times tonight, Tennessee has jumped offside because of the noise. Ephesians Bartley is there to make the hit on Phillips. And it's going to be a second down and still about 12, maybe 13 yards to pick it up. Steve Bartley is another one who was very vocal this week in saying he was embarrassed. He was dissatisfied with the way he played last year up in Knoxville and that he had waited all year for this rematch. Kids don't forget, do they? No, nor do coaches and fans. <laughs> Again, they swing it out of the backfield. Oh, what a hit. That is Ephesians Bartley who comes up and makes the stick on Mose Phillips. And it was right about that spot of the field in the game we were televising last year where he took on tension and knocked him out. That's just like that commercial. Fee Bartley's sitting there. It's like uh, the players come off and say they have ESP or something. <laughs> they, I think he heard you. I Fee think Bartley, so. he's ready to play again that play. Speaking of LSU, they lead huge in their ball game. Memphis State surprising Southern Mississippi tonight. Third down. Little Statue of Liberty. This is Faulkner. Gets a block. Crosses the 45, and I believe he's going to have, well, I don't know. He's going to depend on the spot of the football. He is very close as Carlton Miles, one of the first defensive players to come up along with Hatch to make the tackle. Faulkner, yes. Faulkner. Tennessee with a little trick and play here. You're going to see Kelly come back, and you're going to see Faulkner come around in the reverse. No back set. He has two tight ends. Shows like it's a pass. Here's the give. Now look at the lineman set up. It's almost like a screen pass to that point. That's a good job by Miles as he did not pick it up. You can see Miles was being double teamed and still played off the blockers and got a head gear on it. This is going to be a call now that Johnny's got to make with a short yardage. You're down 28 to 12. You're on the road. Fourth and a half a yard. The last time they had this situation, it wasn't a fourth down, but the quarterback sneaked. So let's watch Andy Kelly. Tennessee leads in total yardage at this point of the ball game, 259 to 242, but they're down by 16 on the scoreboard. It is fourth down. They need just inches. He 
at it. Culpepper is underneath all of that. Kelly off the blocking of Heislinski, Fisher, and Stoll. You're so right. He followed that threesome, and they were able to make the block. And let's go to Craig James for an update. Tennessee's offensive linemen have been saying that they would like to stick with the running game. They feel they can move toward this defensive line out of there. There's still a lot of time left in the third quarter. They can control the clock and keep their offense out there. Craig, and your point is well taken. With, with still 10.43 left in this third quarter and a 16-point uh, difference, that also keeps the Florida offense off the field, which is not a bad idea over the middle and that thing was almost picked off by Kevin Carter he ran right through it Kevin Carter true freshman true freshman along with Larry Kennedy he read the middle screen right from the snap of the ball Minnesota four to one game number four top of the fourth inning most Phillips comes into the ball game you know, we might check with Craig. We didn't hear anything at halftime, but we haven't seen James Stewart since the first quarter, have we? No, we haven't. Florida now has six pass breakups in the ballgame. Right up in the middle. Got Pickens there. Hang on. Breaks the tackle and finally knocked down by Larry Kennedy inside the 20-yard line. Now, I, I'm going to credit Phil Fulmer and Johnny Majors because I think their offensive game plan has been excellent. We talk about Carl Pickens, but when well, they've been doing exactly what they need to do. Here, Carl Pickens comes open against two deep coverage. He's right down the middle again. You'll see the two safeties converge on him. But Andy Kelly has made good choices. He's, he's been able to go to Faulkner, McCluskey, Reeves. Everything except the running game is right on target for Tennessee's offense. Swings it out. This is Phillips again in the flat at the 50. Bartley is the man up on top who is dragging him back, but they'll give him forward progress down around the 14. Ron, if people are sitting at home and we keep talking about the running game, they had 14 yards rushing in the first half. That's by design. Ron Zook's defense, when you have eight people up there, they're telling you, go ahead and throw the football. We're going to take the run away. He's going to take one dimension away. He's taking the run away. So you have to beat him throwing the football with a good mix and good balance. And eventually it'll open up the run. Well, Stewart has just come back into the lineup, number 33. Incomplete. Corey Fleming is the man he wanted. Fleming had a touchdown in that first half. Not a bad day for Andy Kelly, 20 for 31, 279 and a touchdown. His ball club trailing by 16, but right now they are down knocking on the door. They score a touchdown here, Ron. Phil Fulmer is going to have to go to his two-point chart and come up with a two-point play because he's going to need two touchdowns, two two-point plays to tie this game. Third down. They need the seven. Faulkner on the reverse. Has a blocker in front. Has the first down, and it'll be stopped at the five. First and goal, Tennessee. The reason that play is working is because the side that they're running to is the side that the outside backer, Myrick Anderson, number 26, is trying to double on Carl Pickens. So when Pickens releases, Myrick Anderson runs with him. So when Faulkner comes around the reverse, there's no outside linebacker there. That's why they're having success with that. Good play call. Florida might not have thought Faulkner was a big part of the offense tonight, but boy, has he ever been. Straight ahead. Stewart going to be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Guess who? 92, Darren Mickel. Big Darren said, I'm back, and I want everybody to know it. I'm back, I'm bad, and I'm feeling good. He was a basketball player in high school. I went down to recruit him. I sat in the gym in the afternoon and watched him stuff the basketball, and I recruited him, and I might add again, unsuccessfully. But he was an outstanding athlete in high school. He now has recorded seven tackles in this game. Faulkner comes back into the lineup. the two to the one yard line and that's Keith Schuler who had just come in at quarterback the freshman out of Bryson City North Carolina 
He's the option quarterback, and they like him in situations down on the goal line because the option's the extra added item on the goal line because Florida has done such a good job against Tennessee in the running game. Now the option poses them a few different problems they haven't practiced this week. You can see Pickens is on the sideline, and the freshman directs the attack this time for the one and a half. Shuler going to be hit and knocked down. And Mike, I, I thought there should have been a flag. I don't see one, is there? Nickel made the tackle. I thought there should have been a no play. I thought uh, there was movement for the offensive line. I still don't see a flag. I don't see the official who, let's see, threw it up in the stands. <laughs> well, the ball was snapped. Movement by an offensive lineman. It's still third down. So they could not get the flag out of their pocket or it was hidden one side of there. Watch the right guard. A little bit of movement just well, the before they snap well. the ball. Nice Lenski and Stowell inside. both trying to get a little advantage there. So the five-yard penalty. Third down remains. Third down and gold in the new line of scrimmage just outside the six. Now you Andy, Andy Kelly. Kelly back in to throw the football. is the man who speared him, and Tony McCoy was coming pell-mell after the quarterback. Boy, Del Spear, number four, is the, is the person that's responsible for making sure this is not a completion. Andy Kelly, a little high on the throw. Carl Pickens got his hands on it. Should have probably made that catch, but Dale Spears comes into him right as the ball is there to make it an incompletion. Next four to attempt from 23. Take a break. 7:28 left in the third quarter. The new score: Florida 28, and the Volunteers 15. We'll be right back. Kelly goes on the telephone, and I'm probably thinking as he visits with Philip Fulmer upstairs that three times Tennessee has been in what is called the red zone. They have come away with a couple of field goals. The other time they had a turnover on a fumble, but no touchdowns off those situations. Mike. Credit right the Florida defense. It's the bend but don't break theory. This is going to be Kennedy from the two. He must have stumbled for 12 yards. Somebody got a piece of his ankle. Here's what the scoring drive looks like. 13 plays, 55 yards, 527 time elapsed in Bexport. The freshman from Chattanooga with the 23-yard field goal. ESPN resumes its coverage of NFL's Sunday night action on October the 27th at the world champion New York Giants play host to the undefeated Washington Redskins. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann will be there for that key Eastern matchup on October the 27th, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Eric Rett up to the 35, and it's Ernest Fields who was there to make the stop. Here you see now Florida's going to that same set that Tennessee uses. The two receivers to the top, one to the bottom. Now they have a six-man group to run against. So they're going to run the football. They're going to try to use this formation to get their running game going. Play action. Ball is tipped and caught by Sullivan. Alonzo Sullivan as the flag came down and the quarterback Shane Matthews turns to the bench and says Coach Murray it's going to be offensive holding. Holding during the play 10 yards from the spot of the foul still second down. Watch the Florida offense here. Watch the right guard, number 73. Sometimes when you get your hands to the outside and you got those blue hand pads on, the umpires see the blue hand pads, and right then, that's when the flag's going to go. Now, if you're a coach, you get upset because you always feel like home can be called anytime. But, uh, yeah. you know, that, that's what bothers you when you're coaching on the sidelines. Either that or put white gloves on. <laughs> And 
down. Here's that uh, reverse on the shuttle pass that they tried in the first half that was incomplete. Sullivan winds up with the football. And that one might draw a little dust, I would think. Maybe later on in the year, maybe it gets Florida State or somewhere down in there. I see every team will get this tape, so they'll see it, so they'll practice again. So watch Chuck Smith here, number 56. He's responsible for the reverse. He sees it coming. He bends back in and makes the tackle. He, his idol is Lawrence Taylor. He wore his jersey, a, a jersey replica. I know he didn't wear Lawrence's jersey because he has to wear it Sunday. But he, or, or Monday night, I believe, at Pittsburgh. But he, he is his idol, and he wore a jersey just like him in practice the other day. Shane Matthews caught from behind, and it's the first time that he's been sacked tonight. And we were just about to say that Tennessee had brought in the four defensive ends, Smith, Kelly, Rogers, and Mims for the pass rush, and it was Todd Kelly who got him. Good defensive move by Larry Lace. Well, when you do that, the reason you bring on your four defensive ends, you take your two tackles out because they're very good pass rushers. Mike, Edge has got a kick from very close to his goal line, and he just wants to make sure he gets it away. Now, Carter extremely dangerous back there. Tennessee stands to get great field position out of this. And the ball's head to the turn. Oh, he just banged another one. Carter all the way back to the 27-yard line. And Florida with the super coverage. Let's take a break. 4.57 left to play in this third quarter. Gators by 13. 15 our score. Florida on top. Uh, we talked about those four defensive ends coming in for Tennessee and what a great job they've done with pressure. We talked with Chuck Smith about what goes through his mind when it is third and long for the opposition. I look at Blind and I, mean, I see they're nervous. And when I get outside, it's just a whole nother ball game when it's third and long. I just get happy. It's just like Christmas. <laughs> Now you can see that, that jersey that Mike was talking about is a replica of that Lawrence Taylor jersey. Volunteers on offense, this time from the 37. Almost intercepted, good heavens. 41, Ed Robinson was right there, and he can't believe it. It just, had it been on fire, would have burned a hole in his chest. <laughs> he couldn't have threw it to Eddie Robinson any better. Andy Kelly didn't see Ed Robinson coming underneath this route to see where he's trying to get the ball to Corey Fleming, and Ed Robinson came right underneath it. Two weeks ago against Auburn, it was coverage from underneath that got him in trouble in the interception when Smith took it in for the Auburn Tigers to Fred put them back in the ball game. Yeah. Kelly swings it out of the backfield, incomplete, and I'll tell you who you can credit is Darren Mickle. He was away from the play, but he still was close enough. He got a, a big paw up in front to cause the running back not to be able to catch the football, and Hayden dropped it. Hey, you just get yourself in, you dig the hole a little deeper in third and long yardage, but the Florida defense has played well tonight. Johnny Majors needs a first down here bad. He had the momentum switching a little bit. But that punt by Shane Edge really set them back. There's two of them tonight by Edge. Seven pass breakups for Florida tonight. Kelly will be sacked. 71, Tony McCoy. Two times. Kelly has been knocked down tonight. And Florida with a player shaken up. I think it's McCoy who made the sack. Well, Tony McCoy just roars up here on the offensive line. Andy Kelly, again, good coverage. There's no place to throw the football, and Tony McCoy makes the tackle. Ron Rex Norris, who's the defensive line coach now for Tennessee, used to be the defensive line coach for Florida. He's outstanding. He was at Oklahoma under Barry Switzer, but he teaches good pass rush techniques, and I saw some comments by Brad Culpepper said he's not just my coach, he's my best friend when he was here. Chuck Smith said I was lazy when I went to uh, to Tennessee and Rex Norris helped me and, and he shows films of the Vikings and the 49ers and the Giants to his players on pass rushing schemes but the respect that both these teams defensive lines has for him is really impressive for McCoy who is still down on the field and being checked over by the hey, hey. by the staff there and he's going to be okay they get him up he has four tackles two of those solo And being told that he caught a helmet on his right knee and the training staff is helping him off. See if you can pick it up. 
Yeah, there's a headgear on that on that knee. See if the Gators come after him again. Hutton at the 19. And they're coming after him. And the left footer bangs it away. And just like Edge, he really gets a big one. Back to the 15. Duncan, as the flag comes down, will be pushed out of bounds shy of the 30. 53 yards of the kick at 13 on the return. I saw a clip or it's either holding uh, on the return, so uh, Florida will be backed up. Uh, you know, both of these ball clubs, to show you how they have every firepower that you look for, Edge has punted twice tonight, officially 56 and 56. Both putting Tennessee beyond midfield when they thought they'd get the ball in good field position. Hutton comes back after a block kick and boots that one 53 yards. And Johnny told me a funny thing two weeks ago. He said, you know, holding Hutton during the run back to be first down and 10. He said, Hutton is the first left footer I've ever had since I've been coaching. And he said, you know, I don't know why it took me this long because when I played, I hated with a passion to try to return a left footer's kick because of that awkward spin. Well, there aren't many, so you don't get to practice yeah. against them. And the spin's completely opposite. And uh, Johnny's right, and he was a great punt returner. He said, I don't know why it took me so long. He said, if, if I disliked it so much, why wouldn't other return people dislike it? His recruiting coordinator will be looking for all left footers across this country from here on in. We draw a play with ref this time. Squeezes his way for four, maybe five. Clock is now under four minutes. Gators leading, 28 to 15. Difference in the game so far, the three turnovers and the block punt. And then the inability of Tennessee and the ability of Florida to keep them out of the end zone three times. They're down in the red zone and inside the 10-yard line two times. And come away with just field goals. Florida with two wide receivers and two tight ends on this formation. Complete. He wanted Aubrey Hill, and let's go back to Tim Brando for an update. Tim, what do you have for us? Ron out in Pullman. Washington State had a chance, trailing by seven. C.J. Davis will go for the pass, but Jason Oliver comes up with the interception for the Trojans. And the look on the face of Drew Bledsoe will tell you that Southern California did win the game by a touchdown. Noteworthy. They get Notre Dame in two weeks, and they play the Huskies of Washington on November 9th. Thanks, Tim. And they had to come from behind to do it. Last time we looked up there, Washington State was leading that football year. The weekends are going to get a little tougher, too. <laughs> the weeks get a little shorter. Oh, it has Washington nothing to do with Notre daylight saving stuff. Oh, worse than Notre Dame they have. Matthews, wide open over the middle. Got red out of the backfield, and he will have the floor to first down plus five. Well, we talked about trying to get running backs on linebackers in cover two. Here's a, who you're going to have. This Brett against the inside linebacker, Sean Walker. Here you see the drop back. You get the whole field to work with. Sean Walker with a deep drop. Number 45 comes up and makes a tackle, but a good game. Well, you're isolated when you have that back. That one back and you're the middle linebacker. He's got the whole field to roam. Draw play again. Rep as a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Sean Walker is the man who wrapped him up. Okay. Stop by Kelly. Flag. Offense has only six men on the line of scrimmage. I still believe that's a tackle. Maybe somebody could find out from one of the officials, one of our sideline reporters, but I think it's because the tackle is lining up deep to try to get the extra edge against the defensive end. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Zips this one out. Has it complete to Harrison Houston? He'll take it out to the 45-yard line, and that is another Florida first down. Game of 16 yards. Sean Walker and Roderick Lewis are there defensively. By the way, Mike, at the end of the half on that big play, when uh, both 24 and 84 were going after the football, it was Houston who almost came away with a touchdown rather than 24. We 
saw that on the replay at halftime. You see your tackle, the right tackle, how deep he is. I'm not sure whether they're calling him for that, but he's trying to get back a little bit. So is the left tackle to try to help them on pass protection. Now a little mix up of the play. Matthews will wisely go down as Todd Kelly is there to cover him up. And it'll be a second down and long. The other possibility could be, Ron, is the fact that they're using some receivers at tight end tonight, which you mentioned earlier, flexing them. So maybe yeah, they're lined up a little deep and they're not in an ordinary position that they usually line up in. Let me give you my next good heavens. Did you see Vanderbilt is leading Auburn, and that one is in the fourth quarter? Well, I tell you, I live in Mobile, so I know there's going to be a lot of unhappy people in Mobile. Well, it's not then. over. It's not over, but it's <laughs> Van Der Sleep. still unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not by a bunch, huh? Even though it's not over. But, uh... You take the job, better get rid of it. And he, just as he does, that's number 56, Chuck Smith, who is right there on top of it. Both their defensive ends, Chuck Smith and Chris Mims, came out of junior college football. When you look at their defense, you take... Chuck Smith, number 56, Chris Mims, number 93, and number 18, Dale Carter, all junior college players that have helped this team turn around since 1988. 17 of 29, two touchdowns, 198 yards, and two interceptions. Those are the numbers on Shane Matthews tonight. He's going to go long for his running back and it is intercepted by Floyd Milan at the 30-yard line. So the third down pass goes awry. Tennessee will take it over. I guess it's almost like the punt, though, Mike. Puts him back inside the 35-yard line. Shane Matthews tried to go up on top to the corner route. You see the corner route, the receiver running it, the one that he scored the touchdown on earlier. Floyd Miley, who's a corner, didn't have anybody holding him in the flat, so he was able to sink and make the interception. Somebody was in the wrong spot. You also could see number five, Willie McClendon, was there in the area, which brought another defensive player there. Kelly zings a good pass for 10 yards to the 45-yard line. That's McCluskey, the junior out of Knoxville. And Dell Spear comes over to make the stop. Keep in mind one thing, Ron, the Tennessee's offense in the first uh, ball games of the year that they've had, they've been able to hit the big play on special teams. Their defense has been able to turn in big plays. Their offense, Florida's been able to keep them away from the big play tonight to this point. McCluskey now three catches, 49 yards as they go with the running play. And James Stewart just has had a very tough time tonight. Tony McCoy, the senior from Orlando, is there to wrap him up. Glad to see him back in the lineup. He injured that knee, got a ding on it just a moment ago, but he is back and healthy now, obviously. Florida has had great success on first down defensively tonight. They've been able to make Tennessee always be in second and longs and third and long situations which are tough to pick up could be the last play of the third quarter out of the backfield good for 15 yards is james stewart and the ball's keep it alive as they move it into gator territory they're going to spot him down at the 39. Ron, remember I just talked about the reverse a little while ago. Craig Faulkner bringing it around. The reason it was open because Myrick Anderson, number 26, is following Carl Pickens down the field. Same concept here. Fake the play action to the right. The tailback comes right in the area where Carl Pickens clears out. Because they're doubling Carl Pickens, that's opening up that area to where Carl Pickens lines up. Eight seconds left in the period. Kelly going deep over the middle for Pickens and intercepted by Will White. Andy Kelly tried to go up on top on the post pattern to Carl Pickens, but Florida was sitting in a three-deep zone, and there's Will White, number two. Very difficult to throw that against a three-deep coverage. So let's take a break. 
idle 15 minutes just ahead of the Gators. Up by 13. 15 coming up here in Gainesville. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, Adrian Karsten, and Craig James. Glad to have you with us. And his crowd is loving it right now. It is Gator country. But Tennessee has 15 minutes to make amends. They trail by 13. Eric Rett running hard. That's Fields, number 23, who will step up and make the hit. And let's take one more look at the white interception. Here's what Andy Kelly sees. He thinks it's a two-deep coverage, but on the snap of the ball, because they disguise so well, you're going to see a three. You're going to see a three-deep coverage, and it's very difficult to throw the ball in the middle of a three-deep coverage right here when they rolled into it. And there's Will White for the interception. I'll tell you what, Will has always performed well here on ESPN. He didn't start against Alabama earlier this season, but he still came on, played great, and had an interception in that one. Eric Red again. Fields on top, number 23, to stop him at the 10-yard line. And it'll be third down at about five yards needed for the first. Steve Spurrier has not given up on his draw play. I, I referred to his offense early in the show, and I did against Alabama. It's a mirage. He likes to throw the football, but what the basis of this offense is, the running game. Get the running game, making the big plays to move the chains to allow you to throw for the big plays. And the draw play, he has, must have run it at least a dozen times tonight. Matthews just has to get rid of it. The pressure was coming from Shazan Bradley, number 40, the senior out of Athens, Tennessee. So Florida will have to give it up. And Edge, who has had the edge in punting tonight, a couple of 56 yarders, is going to be called on again because, again, from the line of scrimmage, it would appear that Tennessee would be able to get good field position. Let's see what he can do on this one as Carter drops off in a single safety. Tennessee needs a big play on this special teams. They need something either for a score to go block the punt or return or to get great field position so they can get a touchdown quickly. Another dandy. Not quite as long, but it's a, it's a boomer. Back to the 39-yard line. Carter looks for a block, turns it up. Flag comes down, back downfield as he'll go inside the 35-yard line, but I think it's going to come back. As Myrick Anderson, number 26, was there to make the stop, and the Gators have a player down back at the 39-yard line. And right now, let's take a look at the Army's storyline of this one so far. Kelly, 22 of 37, 310 yards and a touchdown. Matthew, 17 of 31, 196, two touchdowns. The Tennessee averaged 1.3 yards per rush, and that is huge. Ron, that was a big play on the punt return because they would have great field position on the 30, but they got the clip called against them, and they lose field position. But when, you, when your punt return against the football, you ask him to make the first guy miss and then get to the wall, and he made the first guy miss, and the clip occurred around the 50 yard line. Edge's punt, that one, I said it was a little less. It was only 51, so he's 56, 56, and 51. He has yeah. been the edge in the kicking game. He really has. <laughs> At penalties, about 30, 35 yards because the bottom two has taken over to 37. Should have been down deep in Florida territory. Aaron Hayden is a tailback. Kelly looking for pickings and made the catch, or did he? Yes, with one hand, and a flag came down. Ephesians Bartley with the cover. Mike. The ball is incomplete. <laughs> Pickens continues to talk with even the defensive players as they come down the field. Yards. Here's Carl Pickens in motion. He's going to run an out and up. Watch him break to the outside. Now he's up the field. He's got a piece in Barkley underneath him. There's the grab right there. Definitely passing the fence. Yes, but he grabbed him around the way. I looked up yesterday just before the teams came out on the field. 
And Ephesians had to crawl upon one of our mobile cams that moves along in the end zone. And he was up there checking out the focus. He has been focused tonight. Kelly for Pickens at the 25 and will be tackled inside the 15. That's Lawrence Hatch. I said it uh, so many times this evening when you face a two deep coverage and he got it caught him in two deep coverage again the corner routes there if you can hold Myrick Anderson with somebody coming across the field because Myrick Anderson if you see Myrick Anderson on him he's going to sit there because there's somebody coming out of the backfield and that opens up the corner route behind him because the safety just can't get over there Lawrence Hatch quick enough. Kelly rolls the pocket, delivers it, had a man open, incomplete. Oh, my goodness. McCleskey was there, maybe waited about a beat too long to get that one away. Ron, here's where they've had all their problems all evening. Inside this area where they've had to settle for two field goals. They fumbled the ball one time, turned it over. Three missed scoring opportunities. They did come away with field goals, but they have to come away with a touchdown. Mose Phillips, number 19, the freshman out of Nashville, comes in at tailback. And short a player. Kelly will have to call a timeout, so he'll stop the clock. With 12.42, it was stopped, but they will call a timeout. And we'll take it with them. Florida 28, Tennessee 15. We'll be right back. And on broadcast television starting Saturday night. Of CFA football, Tennessee versus Florida, is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of Chrysler Corporation, and by Budweiser, the King of Beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. So here's the situation it's a second down and 10 from the 12 yard line for Tennessee. They trail 28 to 15. Puts up the quick pass, complete at the 10-yard line to Fleming, and he'll take it to the 5. So again, they decoy it away. They go to Fleming. And Pickens to the open side of the field, which is a little rare because most of the times Tennessee runs him for, uh, to the boundary side. Put him to the field. You're right. Single receiver to the backside. You saw Ron Zuck, the defensive coordinator, moving his fingers. That's the dying defense. He brought in the extra defensive back on third down. Third down. They need the two. Kelly now 24 of 40, 350 yards. Gets it away, almost intercepted by Dell Spear. Oh my goodness. And Darren Mickle was coming after Kelly, forcing him to unload it. It is fourth down. Well, this is decision time for Johnny Majors here. Just a little too late by Andy Kelly. He rolls to the left, and the longer he takes sliding his feet, just brings too many defensive people over there. Just a little bit too far on the throw. Well, the partisans from Tennessee are not real happy with uh, the balls going for the field goal, but they have a fourth down, and they need about four full yards. That's some tough sledding down there. It's going to be another 23-yard attempt. Credit to Florida defense again. They're able to stop them unless they try a fake. It looks like they'll kick the field goal. Bexford's kick on the way, and he's got it. 12 minutes exactly left in our football game, and our new score is Florida 28 to 18 now over Tennessee. Mike, the point that you have made about this uh, Florida defense, and before we talk about that, let's go to the Tennessee sideline, and here's Craig James. One of the problems with Tennessee's offense is they can't check out of plays once they get inside the 20-yard line. It's so loud in this end zone right now, so therefore, Tennessee's losing about half of their offensive playbook. Uh, hey, it's a good point, Craig. I think the other point is they're one-dimensional down there because they're throwing the football. Florida's taking away the running game. And so they're forcing them to throw the football. Every play down there was a pass. And so it becomes difficult to throw the football that many times down there. But that's what, you're right, the, the ability not to be able to check out and the fact of what Florida's doing on defense with the eight-man front. 
I just substantiate what you were talking about. We're just looking at the stats at halftime. Tennessee had 16 rushes for 14 yards. We've just been told uh, by Elvin Lindblad, our uh, official statistician up here each week, that they now have 33 total yards rushing. So still, the point remains. They've had to throw the ball a lot, but they also have had the run taken away from them. You're right. I mean, that statistics tell a tale sometimes. Sometimes it can fool you. But uh, I'm a big believer you have to run the football. Florida's been able to keep them from doing that. Monty Duncan, five yards deep in the end zone, will not bring it out. Don't forget, at the end of the ball game, Mike and I will select a Visa player from each team. That's coming up at the end of the ball game at about 12 minutes from now. That's how much time we have left in this fourth quarter. Matthews. Keep my eye this time, uh, I'm sorry, on Mark White, number 60, and Tony Rowell, number 56. See how they're doing with our guys, Chuck Smith and Chris Mims. This half for Shane, three of seven, one interception, 39 yards. Flag is down, pass is delivered, almost intercepted by Daryl Hardy. He stepped right in front. <laughs> But Chuck Smith was just roaring up the field on the right side on Mark White. He got just around. It looked like he tackled him. And the flag we talked about, Florida is now retreating. They're going to have to back it up 10 yards. Offense had only five and six men on the line of scrimmage. Still first down. Well, I beg your pardon. I thought it was holding. My misinterpretation. Well, that's been about the fourth time we've heard that call. Ten penalties, 81 yards against the Gators tonight. Rent on the draw will have the five back plus one fields along with Tom Fuller. Come up to make the tackle. Johnny Major's looking up at that clock and he knows full well that his ball club got an uphill task but it's it is retrievable they're down 10. I tell you it's in the hands of his defense right now they've done a nice job in the last three four series of turning the ball back over to their offense they must continue that they have to get this ball back Shane Matthews will run he'll be well short of the first down he's at about the 24 and a half yard line Matthews was about to go down hard and his teammates grabbed him before he hit the turf after Fields hit hitting. They want to go to the Sugar Bowl, so they're going to make sure they grab him when he gets over there close. Chris Mims came so hard up the field and was working so hard on the offensive right tackle Tony Rowell that he was he opened up the seam inside and that's where Shane Matthews took it up inside and picked up good yardage. And now he's still got third and five to try to pick up here. Big down for the Tennessee defense. And again, the volunteers bring in those four defensive ends as the down four. <laughs> Matthews hits Rhett out of the backfield. And he takes it out to the 45-yard line before Lewis makes the stop. First and 10 Gators, and that one's big. Well, we've seen this one all night. We go to a one-back set. Florida's going to isolate number 33 right here, Eric Rett, on the linebacker number 45, Sean Walker. He's going to be able to work any which way he wants to go because Sean Walker has the whole field. Now watch him. Give him a little fake. There's the completion for the five yards and then big yardage after the catch. Just isolating the running back and the one back set on the middle linebacker. He catches for 35 yards for him. Those are the plays that keep the chains moving. Over the middle, Harrison Houston at the Tennessee 40 yard line. We, we talked about this also, Ron, last night, you and I. When you when you play good defense, when your defense is playing great like the Florida defense is, it allows your offensive coaches just to take a little bit more chances in a, in a ball game like this. And they're throwing the ball right now with a good series, still 10-16 on the clock. This is a good drive for Florida. 
about to go under 10 minutes in the ball game. Florida by 10. Draw play with Rick. Finding his way. Has five. Has 10. Cut it off at 14. Dale Carter makes the defensive play. Well, how does Eric Red hurt you? He hurts you with one-on-one -on -one pass coverage where you get, get everybody straight, spread out, and then he hurts you in the draw. Let's go down to get a report from Adrian Karsten behind the Florida bench. Well, Ron, half of this report actually comes across the field from Craig James. He's overheard the defensive ends of Tennessee and saying, hey, we're having our way with the offensive tackles in the tight end of Florida. Steve Spurrier says, fine, you want to have your way outside? We're coming back with draws and plays across the middle and marching down the field, they go. <laughs> well, that they have. Rhett, right up the middle, goes for a couple, maybe three. I'll tell you, that's still some tough sledding up in there because Ernest Fields is up in there. Bradley, Surlis, Hardy. As we get under the 10-minute mark, I think now you have to start talking about the repercussions of this ball game in the SEC race. Florida has not won the SEC championship this last year. They uh, they were in first. In their minds, they did. Yeah, and I think yeah. in a lot of people's minds, they won it. But uh, uh, so this game is a pivotal game in this league race. Nine minutes left in the ball game. Red. Oh, he gets tagged. That's that little misdirection that they started running against Alabama that worked so well. It's like a toss sweep, and everybody starts to run, and all of a sudden he plants and comes backside. Now, the next phase of that is they'll pitch it back to Eric Red. He'll start to make his counter and give it back to Shane Matthews, and he'll throw a pass off of that. Ernest Fields has had a fine game for Tennessee tonight. He was on that stop as well. Okay. Clock runs with eight minutes and 20 seconds to play in the ball game. Florida 28, Tennessee 18. Kills came in motion. Markers come down all over the place. Going to be a delay, and they couldn't get it off before the 25 second clock had gone. I might ask how you'd get a delay a game in this situation, but there's so much movement. Delay a game, offense, five yard penalty. Steve Spur has done such a great job of substituting tonight. Now we haven't seen a no back set for how long? Now he's giving you a one back set, two back set. But to do that, you've got to substitute a lot of people in there, and then he had motion on that play. That caused the delay. And that time his tight ends were confused as to whether both were supposed to be in the ball game or only one. Let's watch Eric Rett against the linebacker. Third down. At about nine and a half for the first. Matthews running for his life, and he'll go down at the 22. It's well short of the first down. And let's see if we see Arden Krzyzewski come on. Yep, he's loosening up the leg at the 40. Casey Rogers put it into the road for Matthews. I always see when you come to Florida, Arden Krzyzewski, he just sits with you and talks. He he's an interesting what character. What an entertaining right? kid. In fact, he has more superstitions than you can say grace over. In fact, we'll get to those before this ball game is over. This is going to be an attempt of 38 yards. Arden this year, 9 of 11. His longest, 48. Ball is blocked. Loose at the 16-yard line. It will be knocked out of bounds by Tennessee. Tennessee's not dying easy. They're, they're hanging in there, Ron. So the Volunteers block the field goal attempt. Let's take a break. Gators continue to lead by 10. Playing the ball game, and let's check out the block. Daryl Hardy got it, Mike. Okay, when you watch a wing back, what you ask him to do is you have to block inside. He has two men. You block the inside guy, and then you come back out on the outside guy. But you see Daryl Hardy get inside, and he's able to block the kick. Chris Bilkey, number 39, he got inside him. There's a second look to see him block the kick, and you need those kind of plays to turn it over to give your offense another shot. Kelly dumps it out of the backfield to pick him. D. Bartley is out there running laterally with him, and now two flags come down at the 21-yard line, and it will be a face mask against Florida. And I'm sure that Mr. Spurrier is saying, we don't need any gifts right now, gentlemen. We only lead by 10. Second 
Chase Masters, the defense, 15 yards. First down. Mike, this is what's happened to the Volunteers the last three times they've had the football. See, they lead this ball game in total yardage, 380 to 345. But they drove 56 yards, they got a field goal, 55 yards in a field goal, then 43 yards and an interception as you look at the individual numbers on Pickens tonight. Going to go upstairs and going for number 15 again, and it is intercepted by Florida Del Spear. Well, sometimes you just try to strike too quick. Patience is a gift sometimes here. Andy Kelly's going to try. You're going to see the roll, but the safety's going to come over the top of Carl Pickens. And you're going to see him try to throw the ball down the corner. Here's the corner is going to fade with him, but watch the safety come over the top, number four, Dell Spear, and make the interception. Mike, that's a great job by Spear. Watch him look down to make sure he's got his feet in bounds. There's, there's, the interception. there's Larry Kennedy trailing him. Dale Spear knows right where he is. Watch you're him. right, just like a receiver. <laughs> Eric Rett has one, maybe two. 56, Chuck Smith knocked his feet out from under it. Now the clock is running. Six minutes and 30 seconds left in the ballgame. And for Florida, a couple of first downs, and that would be huge as the Volunteers have two timeouts. They can stop the clock. But a couple of first downs are going to loom large. Ron, credit to Florida defense. They've got an outstanding game play. But I think the key to tonight, when you look back on this game, is going to be the effectiveness of the Florida defense not to allow Tennessee to establish a running game. And a little misdirection again. And it's Rhett. He'll have the first down. And here comes another flag. And from the far sideline, as Fields makes the stop. Minnesota now jumping on top. Six to one in the bottom of the sixth inning. Auburn now leading Vanderbilt. 24-22 in the fourth. <laughs> well, Vanderbilt's had some close games where they've almost won some games. Holding during the run by the offense. So let's reset it. This penalty will push it back to the 29 yard line and it's going to be second down and 10 to pick up the first come back to Vanderbilt I'm sure watching down left some good players there and Jerry Denardo in his first year is uh, just trying to get some wins uh, so that they understand how to win and can win some football games Now the flag comes down and they have a delay of game. I tell you, there's so much going on. The crowd is so loud. It's the second time this quarter that Florida has been called for delay of game. You know, I, I was mentioning when you look at this crowd, you look at the Florida band, the Tennessee people. I mean, Tennessee's got a great group of fans here. This crowd is unbelievable. You know, they're I, really into this game. They really are. And I think mentally and physically, they're wearing down just like the, the players are. Matthews hit as the ball is delivered incomplete. Harrison Houston was the closest to the football. And underneath the rush of Chris Mims is Shane Matthews. What Tennessee needs now is a defensive turnover. You have to get a fumble, have to get an intercepted pass, they've got to get something quickly. Now Tennessee needs to get him back on the field as soon as possible. And of course he has played this side of, of the football. The coaches, you remember we said a couple of weeks ago, said he's an All-American as a wide receiver. If he had played defense, they think he would be an All-American there. He's that good an athlete. First time we've seen the no-backs set in the second half. Short drop, gets it right over the middle to Willie Jackson, and he'll take it to the 37. That's close to a Florida first down, but he'll miss it by a yard and a half. Sean Walker is there to make the stop. Punt the football. It's, it's the only decision there is right now.
They might let this clock run all the way down. It may take another delay. Yeah, because Edge has simply been outstanding in the ball game. Dale Carter drops off again in a single safety. And Tennessee lines up 10 at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they have a return on or if they will, in fact, go after it. Edge with another beauty. Oh, my goodness. This one's got to be over 50 as well. And Florida with a great kick return will nail him inside the 10. 56 yards and a loss of four on the return. That is simply outstanding. Let's take a break. 430 left in the ball game. Gators by 10. that the cheerleaders think they're feeling it right now with four and a half minutes to play still enough time when you got weapons like Pickens and company but I'll tell you what it is looking more and more like the Florida Gators are going to come up with revenge after the pounding they took last year in Knoxville situation four and a half minutes to play it is Florida by 10 and the crowd is on their feet Andy Kelly zips it out of the backfield and it'll be dropped by Tavio Henson Tavio Henson comes into the game, the drop back game. He knows the drop game, drop back game a little bit better than the freshman running backs. Has pretty good hands. That was a low ball, was tough to catch. Only five seconds used on that play. Faulkner and McCluskey come to the bottom of your screen. this one complete to his tight end Von Reed and here comes a flag in thrown by the umpire that normally is offensive holding check it Mike will one loss take you out of the SEC race I was going to ask you holding that No, I don't think so. You, you think the winner of this game still has a possibility of losing the ball game in this league race? Yes. If it's Florida, who is the most dangerous people to... Florida field record. Over 85,000, the largest crowd ever to see a game in the state of Florida. That was the case the last time we were down here. And they've increased it tonight. Pressure is on Kelly, and he dumps it off to Henson again. Out to the 15, and now the 18-yard line. Lawrence Hatch came over to make the tackle. It's going to be a gain of 16. Ron, if Florida holds on, we were just talking there, and you felt like that uh, one loss wouldn't necessarily take you out. There's what Florida's remaining schedule. Well, see, they, they got to go to Auburn. They got to go to a much-improved Georgia. And they still got Kentucky left. Henson, and he's going to pick up the first down as they step out of bounds. But I'll tell you that, you know, the, the trip to Auburn will never be easy for this football team, plus the fact that Georgia is playing some outstanding football. They had an impressive win on the road today up at Oxford against Ole Miss. I'm so impressed with this league and the games we have been able to do of the crowd support and just the what it takes out of the players I just it's unbelievable to me as I travel around the SEC just to see the input that everybody has in these games it's just outstanding incomplete on first down Mark Adams is the man that he wanted Kelly back and to Adams incomplete what Florida's doing on defense at this time, Andy Kelly's dropping eight people, so they're trying just to take away everything deep, making work the field, throw the short passes to Tavio Henson, and just make them work and burn time on that clock. Kelly, great protection to the ball is intercepted by Larry Kennedy.
Kennedy, the freshman, takes the interception, 44 yards for the touchdown. Arden Krzyzewski knocks it up and through, and with 3.25 left in the game, 35 to 18. I just talked about how the fact of now they got you in a, a rush where they're going to play heavy zone coverage on you. So if you try to throw the ball deep, you're really going to throw into some pretty good coverage. This ball just was thrown behind Carl Pickens. Larry Kennedy just with a good interception, a good block by number 57, Kevin Carter, with a touchdown. So let's take a break. 35 to 18, Florida. Well, this is the scene. And the crowd, it's a record crowd tonight, and I think they're trying for a record in noise, Mike. It's been hard to really hear yourself here for about the last 20 minutes, about the last eight minutes of the ball game. See, Gators with Tennessee. I saw a Gator right outside my room. <laughs> You're not exaggerating, because you woke me up to come out there and look at it. It wasn't bad at 1 o'clock in the afternoon when I was walking in at 3 o'clock in the morning. I wonder where he was at. J.J. McCluskey takes the pooch kick, and it's Ed Robinson, number 41, the sophomore, who was down there to make the tackle. You left the door wide open. I mean, you mentioned 3 in the morning. I know this crew uh, has a curfew, so I won't ask you what you Oh, we were out bowling. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make that perfectly clear. I was with the camera crew. Great group of guys here that have set up this bowling tournament. Oh, a little make unusual it, tournament. Don't make it sound like that's a group of monks. <laughs> Pass caught for the tight end, Adams, and he'll be tackled at the 31. Mike, very quickly, if we can, now let's, let's uh, finish this situation on schedule. Let's take a look at what Tennessee has remaining as far as SEC play. And, of course, they're going with the no-huddle right here. We'll probably do it at the end of this play for Andy Kelly gets it on. Clock runs under three minutes to play. Gators with a commanding 35-18 lead. That one is going to be thrown short. And let's go to Tim Brando for an update. Ron, as we mentioned at halftime, Lee Corso, it's been the day of the missed field goal and the made field goal. Jeff Owen had a 55-yarder in Nashville. It was wide to the left, had plenty of distance. Auburn ekes out the win, 24-22. Interesting point about that schedule. It's been a while since the old cocktail party meant as much, with Georgia down and Florida past probation problems. Well, you're right, Tim. When you talk about that game, Ron, we were just talking about that Georgia game will be a big game now. Probably always is anyway, but it, the oh, extra oh, it is. significance. And, it, and, it, and the dogs are playing extremely well. Pass looped over the middle. It is caught, and it's going to be a fourth down. James Stewart made the reception. Lawrence Hatch there to make the stop, and it was Bill Gunner, number 93, who was coming with pressure. There's a gentleman right there. He's a good football coach, Johnny Majors. He'll get this team rebounding next week. This Steve young Stewart, fellow right here. He's he done an outstanding job. Well, you're right. It is interesting to watch him on the practice field. He is a great teacher. And he has taught well the Florida football team. That pass is going to be caught complete. That'll be enough for the first down on the fourth down try. Well, when you're the winning staff, you feel good. The losing staff is very tough. Thirty of fifty-two, three interceptions, three eighty-four for Kelly. drops the pass over the middle and that stops the clock with 201 to play very quickly this is the Tennessee schedule what they have left at Alabama at Notre Dame of course uh, not a conference game they play host to Ole Miss at Kentucky they still have Vanderbilt that game uh, on October 19th is going to be an interesting one because Alabama's playing very well yep they really are so probably of the remaining schedules you'd say that Tennessee probably has the toughest of it left right now, don't they? But they picked up a, an L tonight, so uh, they go in the whole one, so the, the Georgia game's going to be the important game on the schedule for Florida right now. Rome complete the Bond Reeves, the tight end. And you know, Ron, we talked about Vanderbilt seeing that score. I mean, they, they're they're so close, and uh, you know, sometimes you just need to win a game, like we talked about Johnny Major's team in 88, losing six in a row, then they win five in a row, then they win 29. From that point, it just you never know when the light bulb goes on. 
No, it's very true. And I, I guess, you know, I shouldn't say that Tennessee has the tougher of the two schedules because we witnessed today a couple of games that were it seemed like they should have happened. Waco, Texas today. Rice is a 20-point underdog to an undefeated top 10 Baylor team, and Rice wins. So <laughs> when it comes to conference, kids grow up together, they're recruited together, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of added incentive. Well, you made a good point when you started this game. You said for 365 days, these Florida people have been getting ready for Tennessee. Now the reverse is on. Now Florida, when they play Tennessee next year, will have the same situation. Residents in CFA scoreboard with Tim Brando and Lee Corso coming up next. This is Hayden. He'll get out of bounds. One loss does not take you out of the national picture. I've been saying that all week. I know there's a dominating team or two out there in Florida State and Washington, but one loss doesn't take you out of it. As I said before, when you get to your second loss as a coach, then you ask for a college playoff because that's the only thing that's going to get you back in. Get the defense five yards, give them a first down. So the drama is extended just a bit, but still it would take a miracle with 51 seconds left and the Florida Gators on top by 17. First down, Tennessee. out of bounds. Here are tonight's Visa players of the game from the University of Tennessee, Chuck Smith. He had four tackles and many pressures tonight. And from the University of Florida, freshman defensive back, Larry Kennedy. One touchdown interception return. He had four breakups and 75 yards in kickoff returns. And as a part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each university and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team. Kelly will be sacked by 93 Bill Gunner. That is the third time that Florida has gotten to the quarterback tonight. And now the clock runs under 30 seconds to play. Chris Fowler and Lee Corso coming up next to the Residence End scoreboard show. And they'll talk about what has been an upset Saturday. Texas surprised Oklahoma, who was in the top ten. Syracuse got shocked by East Carolina. However, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of people on this crew, you and myself included, though, that are never surprised what happens to East Carolina. I think that young fellow does a great and job there, and they're a good football team. Well, I think Billy Lewis has himself a pretty good football team. I think Syracuse is a good, solid ball club, yes. too. And, and you just never know. I saw some plays from our scoreboard show on there, some unusual plays. But, uh, again, you credit Bill Lewis with, a, with a, his staff with an outstanding win. You said Fred Goldsmith and his staff at Rice and the Texas staff. But uh, you look at Paul Pascaloni, who's done a very fine job of that Syracuse team. And, uh, and they'll, they'll still be back in this picture also. And Baylor, Grant Taft, he'll rebound. And uh, just college football. That's what makes it so great. That's me being a broadcaster, I say, not as a coach. <laughs> well, they go with the running play. And down to the 45-yard line, and that could very possibly be the final play of the game. Tennessee being run now by Heath Shuler, the freshman out of North Carolina. And Tennessee will call a timeout. They'll stop it with seven seconds left. And, of course, the crowd was just getting in rhythm with the countdown, so they come up with a large boo. Next Saturday night, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Mike and I will be up in the beautiful Rockies as... The Notre Dame Fighting Irish come to town to take on the Air Force Academy. And uh, that's always fun up there. I just hope that this time, the last time we were up there, they had the flyby, which we were expecting. But then a, a, a B-1 bomber or, or something, a B-something came over that just shocked us all right out of our, our socks. Well, I've never been there. They say, I, say it's a beautiful place. It is. Fisher it is. DeBerry and his coaching staff uh, off to a great year. And, of course, Lou Holtz and, and the Notre Dame staff have... Uh, uh, continue to win and continue to put a good football team both sides of the ball on the field.
Kelly running for his life. He will go that beg your pardon, Heath Schuler down to the 32-yard line, and this one is history. As the Florida Gators have gotten revenge from the Tennessee Volunteers from last year's 45 to 3 shellacking. And they have won it, 35 to 18, and have just been handed the numbers on Andy Kelly as Shula came in to take on, take over for him late. 35 of 56, three interceptions, 394 yards. And let's go down to Adrian Carston, who is with a happy Steve Spurrier. Coach, congratulations. What was it that allowed you to win this game tonight? Was it the emotion, 85,000, the big plays? What was the biggest element? Adrian, I think it was everything combined. We've been pretty good in our ballpark because we got the best fans in the world, but our defense played super. We, we gave a little ground here and there. Coach Ron Zook had a super defensive plan for him. Shane Matthews, receivers made some big catches. It was a team victory. Coach, you've been in the past concerned about your special teams when your punter, Shane Edge, averages over 50 yards a kick with hang time of five seconds. Yeah. Pickens and Banks never became an, an issue. Shane was outstanding, and our kickoff man did a good job also. So it was, uh, like you said, all of our guys played super tonight. What's it like being at home as opposed up to Knoxville? That's a lot different. Congratulations, Coach. Ron, back to you. Thanks, Adrian. So the Florida Gators have won over the Volunteers of Tennessee. Stay tuned for the scoreboard show after this commercial. Florida wins it 35 to 18.